Shout out to the Lock <clears throat> Talk Radio. Welcome to the war room. We got Ted, Kill, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the hot block commander. How you wanna end up one or two hour show and keep the brain running with the printers and talk sports on a national level? Full with the topics, sort of like the rubber, but it's game time like the Fab Five doing prime time. Sports conglomerates speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and great. The 4 for 26, so the war ain't can wait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys, the first of five and educated. Still not challenge y'all to have a better one. <laughs> what up, everybody out there? You are once again live in the war room, brought to you by War Room Sports on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. I'm one of your hosts, I'm Dev McMillan, but I'm in the building with my brothers. We got Jimmy the Blueprint and that boy B. Austin. Alhamdulillah. The season is down to its final four, and we'll rap about that a whole lot more. We also going to give out our uh, NFL awards, we're going to do that real quick because, you know, we don't like to, to bore the homie Jimmy with all this NFL talk since he's not <laughs> dealing with it this year. Um, but um, Fred Perdue is going to call us and join us for that because we haven't, because the network's been down, we haven't had a chance to do cover two in a while, so he's going to help us give out NFL awards. So uh, stay tuned for that in just a few minutes. But look, settle in. Keep it locked right here, and if you want to get in on the conversation, you know the deal. Just make sure you join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room, or you could join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports. You can also call us directly in about 10 minutes when we open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline at numbers 323-410-0012 during the week. When we're not live on the air, be sure to check out archive episodes of our show at warroomsports.com. BlogTalkRadio.com slash The War Room, The War Room Sports mobile app, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, wherever you get, you know, get, wherever you listen to podcasts. What up, bros? What's the deal? What up, I though? Know Shout out to the Mini Van know this. Myras. This is a question I got for you guys. <laughs> Mini we've Van Myron. We've been doing this highly acclaimed show for the past seven years, going on eight. What? People still out there listening to these shithole shows. <laughs> that's, that's the in word of the week. Yo, shitholes. In shithole countries. <laughs> yo, yo, shout out to the board, though, because uh, I got to check that they had a couple more dollars in it. But, you know, anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yo, first, like, seriously, man, what's wrong with y'all president, man? He's, first, yo, he's man. denying that he, that he said it. We know how. Our, uh, you talking about our, our 6'3", 235-pound uh, president, whatever he said he was? Yeah. <laughs> Alternative facts rule. Like my man say stuff, do stuff, and then just say, what me? No. <laughs> Fake no, news, man. Not, me? Shout out to Shaggy. <laughs> and uh, and the other boy that made that song, it wasn't me, because the president. <laughs> I got in the corner. Yeah, that's pretty much where it came from. What, what, what you know, I got you know I gotta get what me? props. What, what me? Yo. Yo, it's funny, right? It's funny because I was thinking about this the other day. I was talking to a young boy, and um, I used a reference from like Delirious or Raw, one of them, because they all run together to me. Um, he was like, that's crazy. I'm like, I'm looking at like, yo, I'm old as hell because you don't even know Raw and Delirious. Like Raw and Delirious is my life. What is wrong with you? I'm ready to smack you? <laughs> <laughs> He yo really man, shout out! Yo, shout out to shout out to all the Trump uh, supporters who are angry at the uh, former number forty four's wife with the cakes because she be kind of showing the cakes when they're on vacation, and they're like mad that she's on the beach in a bathing suit. Meanwhile, the first lady has posed naked multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of effery going on in the White House, man. Yo. Definitely. And shout out to uh, Casey Mac thirty eight. The War Room Sports Game Time Group. He said, "We in the house." I don't know if you Casey at back. the gig or not, but if you are, then shout out to all the homies at the firehouse as well. Um, now, is that is that Casey Mac or Texas Dallas Mac? Like, which Mac is that? <laughs> <laughs> when, the, when, the, well, when the season's over, who's he root for? <laughs> I don't know, Casey. What's up, man? Casey, who, who your all season squad? 
The one that made it to the <laughs> playoffs. He can't see, he can't see Mac. They made it, he they made it to Mac. the playoffs. He's down Mac right now. I guess it's, for real? you know, it ain't for really from his way. He's big, he big baller little Mac. He lift the weight of Mac right now, he man. He lift the weight of Mac. Shout out to the home lift Mac. All right, man. <laughs> we, we tripping. All right, so uh, let's let's get into some hot topics. You know how we do. Hot topics are brought to you by Sports the Book. If you guys are tired of reading those same old BS sports book with the, the list and the rankings and the imaginary starting lineups and the super duper advanced analytics and all that stuff that's subjective, and, you know, you got to try to pass it off as gospel. Be sure to pick up your copy of Sports. Follow the acronym now. Smart people only read the sports. It's a mixture of sports and hip-hop culture to keep you on the edge of your seat. It'll keep you laughing. Man, it might even make you cry. But it'll make you think, definitely. But just go to sportsthebook.com, get your copy. Or you can get your copy from our website at warroomsports.com. Wherever you end up getting your copy, just make sure you don't miss out. Yo, the joint is lit. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, we get all this NFL stuff out of the way. Um, Gus Griffin should be calling in, you know, to give us his NFC championship uh, investment picks. Um, I'm not exactly <laughs> sure how he did okay. last week. The last week of the, the regular season, you know, he made a nice little comeback. But uh might have been too little too late for the yeah, confidence um, of the good people out there. Are, we'll, are we going uh are we going to talk about the fight game this week or um I mean the NBA cuz that's like <laughs> oh hell yeah we we saving most of the time for the for the NBA games. I'm like dang the NBA, the NBA yo I don't know what's going on in the NBA man. I think like maybe whether promotions or Bob Arum or something, you know what I mean? They they got a hand in they trying to get you know, could they on squad or something? No, no, no. You giving it too much. You giving it, yo. That's definitely Vince McMahon. That's involved. NBA. Yeah, you right. You know what? You NBA know what? That's gangster them. That's what it is. You right. Shout out to Charlie. Man. Charlie Murphy. Cause, that word. Because it's fake tough guy stuff, but it's actually hilarious though. Yo. Charlie Murphy said, "I come from three generations of gangster them." Is that? <laughs> <laughs> Rest in power to the gods. Yo, I'm mm-hmm. just say one yeah. more thing because we gonna talk about it later. But your man Cliff Paul has been fake thugging so long. I just want to punch his nose to the back of his head. <laughs> I don't even know why. Yo, I've been wanting to fix his haircut. So <laughs> shout out to Cliff Paul because Cliff Paul is he's such a leader on and off the court that he get he gets his guys to even do his dirty work. No doubt, and we're definitely gonna talk about to that. Bend his, bend his that situation track, yeah. is kind of appalling when you break down, you know. All the pure facts of it, so we, we're definitely gonna get that. Come so color is hurry up to all this other stuff. Listen, um, NFL, playoffs, you know, let's get this stuff out of the way real quick. B, um, the divisional round it was kind of exciting, except for the game that no one thought was gonna be exciting the Patriots game, where they basically ripped through the Titans, who nobody really expected or thought would be there oh. at that point. Um, but you had some nail biters in the other game. I mean, your Philadelphia Eagles, B. Austin, mm-hmm. the game basically came down to two yards in the defensive stance. The uh, dog. So the game in Pittsburgh, where the Jags are known for their nasty defense. Jags got 42 on them, but they put 45 on Pittsburgh. I don't think anybody expected that kind of scoring from that game. And um, what, what was the other game? <laughs> The, the Saints and the, the Vikings, the, the Vikings the might have had the most epic NFL playoff ending ever. Ever. So you have three nail biters down to the wire, and then you had the Patriots just running through people like they do. So Yo. let's go to the to the biggest moment of the weekend. What did you think about that Viking Saints finish? Um, I feel really sorry for that safety. Uh, Marcus Williams he actually. Marcus Williams had a, actually a great game up until that point, and then he got himself he into the hall season. of infamy. Then he got himself <laughs> into the hall of infamy forever. Like he's in foreverdom. Shout out to Charlie Murphy. He's in foreverdom what, as. What is it that you think he's trying to accomplish with that? I know, that I know exactly. A, that, uh, no, no. I have no theory. Theory. Let's see, let's see theory matches. 
he but here's the thing, though. I know you've seen this a million times. Because here's my thing. That's it's how you know it's news. bad because that right. joint is so bad that I don't even watch football, and I've seen the play because people kept texting, email, took over Twitter. like, <laughs> And I don't know, I, like, the context of the game. All I know guy. is that was the last play. So, I mean, right. from, a meme, like, from a meme perspective, uh, the meme that I went with is that his contact dropped, and he was looking for his contact. Um, but the reality <laughs> is, I think no, but you being a former defensive to. back, like what could he been? What what he, was he, he he was trying to hit him without carrying him out of bounds and stopping the clock. He was trying and to upend him doing it. and keep him in the field of play, but his his tackling technique was terrible because he didn't. He always thought, see what you hit, hit what you see, and there's no way he saw dude after he took that type of angle. But I think he was my trying theory. to hit him and keep my him perspective, in the and, and, and again, again, I haven't watched it again. My perspective on just watching that play is he was trying to make the smart play. And what yeah. I mean by that is he overthought it, and, and it's, in the, it's in the heat of the moment. So he's like, I just want to hit him and knock him down. I don't want to get an interference call. I don't want to um, – you know, do anything, and he just no, – no. listen, listen, Jimmy, it, it, that's absolutely what it was. He was trying to make the smart play because he didn't want to carry him out of bounds, which then mm-hmm. sets them up for the field goal. But you and rather – A long field goal. field goal. A long field but goal. But no, with Jimmy, one part of what Jimmy said was my primary theory. My theory was he was trying to avoid pass interference, point blank, thinking maybe mm-hmm. the ball was going to sail over his head. I'm not going to hit him because I don't want to give them – Excuse to give them another play, and do. But at least if you're gonna do that, open your eyes. Like why? Maybe it was his momentum taking him a certain way. I don't, I don't get it. But you know, and you know, it's crazy to me. In the negative, he, cause he's definitely, he's definitely gonna live in me, like B. Austin said. But it's interesting to me, um, just because it's like, you know, we're all at home when we watch sports and when we do these things. But in the heat of the moment, cause I know that has to be like some nerve-wracking mm-hmm. stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And like B. Austin said, it doesn't matter what he does the rest of his career. He can be the greatest player in the Yo. history of the Saints, and it don't even matter at this point. He might as well just retire right now. I'm rooting and, unless he does something that wins them the Super Bowl, this is going to live with him forever. Yo, I'm <laughs> rooting for him to be a top seven safety of all time, man. I'm rooting for him, man. I, I, I don't even know that. I, but that don't even but matter, it, though. Like, it's, it's, it's sort of like, it's, it's, you know, it's like, it's Chris it's like what Tom Brady talks. Chris Tom Brady's Brady got a Hall of Famer. Yo, Raheem, you know, Tom Brady got five rings, and he's still haunted by that sixteen and zero game they lost. So Raheem, <laughs> um, Raheem, Raheem Moore missed that tackle on Jacoby, Jacoby Jones, and he died afterwards because I haven't seen him since. Yeah, yo, but no, Jim, yo. you you right though because like I said, Chris Weber, he's had a Hall of Fame career, and people still talk about the timeout he took out. <laughs> so, yeah, that wasn't even F- true in his career. Like that even the Brady high. thing, I think Brady has accomplished enough where you know that probably haunts him just because he's competitive. Yeah. But nobody really thinks about that except for Giants fans, and yeah. rightfully so. But yeah, it was the, one of the craziest endings that I've ever seen. And shout out to uh, to uh, Stefan Diggs. And I'm not gonna give him props like he did something great because you know he's brown in the end zone for like 30 minutes afterwards. Like, you know, he did something <laughs> Jerry Rice-like. Yo, but I'm giving him should, props for just having, the, just having the frame of mind to – because he was just shocked as anybody else not to have gotten tackled. So I had a frame of mind <laughs> to put his hand down on the ground and stay up and, and keep running. <laughs> he was like, it's lit. You know, <laughs> think about it. He could have done something equally as stupid and maybe – caught the ball, and then rushed to get out of bounds thinking they were going to get some more time. Mm-hmm. And he probably would have, you know, stepped out. Time would have expired, and he'd be the guy that we're talking about like this. But he That's kept running. Seven. <laughs> yeah, kept running, got it in. Touchdown, here we are. As an Eagles fan, I was kind of happy. I'm not saying that, you know, Vikings fans are going to take this the wrong way. I'm not saying that. I don't want to be <laughs> Is there a such thing as Vikings fans? <laughs> oh, it is this week, but um, <laughs> I don't want anybody to take it the wrong way because I'm not saying oh because we're getting the Vikings going to win, but there are matchups that you like better than some, and I told y'all from the door when the playoffs started, like if we could find a way to avoid the New Orleans Saints, I'm all for that because 
even though they lost that game, I still view them as probably the most complete team that was in the playoffs. Um, and you said you didn't know the context of the game. Minnesota led this game from jump, had a, a nice little, maybe like a 13, 14 point lead early. And in the fourth quarter, Drew Brees became Drew Brees. And, you know, all things yeah. fell apart. They finally took the lead, and then this happened. <laughs> Damn, I mean, Drew I Brees came play. down, and you I thought the game was over. Him. The game was Damn. over. He came down and did his two-minute thing. <laughs> so my only question is, and I don't know, like, how salty was he at the end? Like, did he do a press conference and, and you know? Well, I'm going to tell you how salty he was. He didn't walk birthday. out on him. His birthday came. was the next day. How, how <laughs> bad was his birthday? No, Damn. but that's the thing. We were about to go from talking about – the question all week was going to probably be a reevaluation of Drew Brees and his standing as an all-time quarterback. It should still be that, but because they ended up losing the game through no fault of his own, because they left him, they scored and left Drew Brees like a minute and 32 seconds. Jimmy, he, he, he drove them in the field like it was nothing. <laughs> minute Damn. and 32. The game was over. Vikings fans were leaving. I guarantee you people at home were breaking televisions, all kinds of stuff. And then the miracle happens. So I'm waiting for them to give it a nickname. Um, Case Keenum is better. Yeah. Case Keenum is a dude right now. And all he did was throw that joint up. Um, <laughs> yo, he threw it up to the heavens. He admitted that, too. I, like, we got, yo, um, I've only, we got I've only stopped, watching, I've only stopped watching football one season, but I feel like the whole world has turned on his axis. When Minnesota and Jacksonville are still playing, I'm like something wrong. Yo, it ain't yo, been that I'm long. Gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you something, and I think we are, we will get into this with the analysis of the game. So what 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 game are we going to next? Well, I mean, what what highlights? The Patriots yo, game is really not Jimmy, worth talking about. And I, I no, I'm not going to. Yo, the only I'm thing I got, the only bars I got for that is, is, yo, why is Marcus Mariota in the NFL? I've seen better flag football quarterbacks than Marcus Mariota. He's trash. All I'm saying is I root, I root for y'all man on Jacksonville, the cornerback, just so no. I can um, get more Yo. laughter and mean. No, let me let me break it down for you, brother. <laughs> you let me well, break it well, down well, for you, well, brother. Well, you tell me. Jacksonville's defense is made of original men. And Paul <laughs> Pruitt. Like Yo, and then look, you missed out on life, Jimmy, and not being able to watch Jacksonville's defense. Not the team. Just their defense. Calais Campbell, Miles Jack, and that dude, Jalen Ramsey. <laughs> you tell me. Gay, gay bull. <laughs> you tell me. Is, um, yo, they are a man. Uh, well, uh, well, all right. All right. Yo, a grown man coming at me like that. <laughs> a right. grown man coming at me like so, that. Uh, so what were your thoughts on? Yeah. Yo, Andy Toe. Yo, I don't know what happened. It's like Dev has got Andy. kidnapped in the middle of the show. Andy Toe. Yo, free Dev. So, free Dev Mac. I think um, <laughs> where we were going with that uh, was, you know, your thoughts on that particular game, Pittsburgh versus Jacksonville, which, you know, Jimmy, we know that you, you didn't see it. Um couple things came came to mind. Pittsburgh's defense, yo, they need a they yo, they need a, they need a new life. They need a new lease on life. Like defensively, and I get it, I understand because you've invested in Fuck talking um, to Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. don't, we don't you got kidnapped. Um they've Free invested death. heavily on the offensive side of the ball and believe you me, it shows. I mean, their defense, while they do get home with their front four, their linebackers without Ryan Shazier need more people. Their defensive backs, Joe Hayden is by far and away the best cover corner, and this is no slight to Joe because he has, a border, to me, a borderline Hall of Fame career, but Joe Hayden shouldn't be your best corner at this stage in his career, and he's easily the best corner. Uh, Mike Mitchell – believes he's better than he is, they need to spend some money on defense because Blake Bortles shouldn't be able to put up 45 on them. Like, their yeah, defense thought, is a problem. 
I thought Hayden played for Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know. Nah, he, he he moved on to the steel to the steel city, but well, hold on though. I gotta I gotta reevaluate something. I know Hayden is your man based on a personal relationship. Um and again, I mean it's only been one season. Did you just say the boy's a Hall of Famer? Borderline. I said borderline. Borderline. I don't even know about yeah. that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I know that's your man and all, but best, really? best, best at best at the position, um, putting up the numbers and the stats. He's not the athlete. Some of the other shutdown corners are, but my man was dominant. Cats weren't throwing Yo, the ball to, to right. him. Is, 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 that, is that bias? Is that you, you? Are you being objective in saying that he's borderline Hall of Famer though? Yeah. I'm not saying Cleveland he's not good. Ball. I'm not saying he's not good. But you said the ball is borderline Hall of Famer. Though. Borderline, borderline. Cats weren't throwing the rock at him for about for about oh, man. six seasons. We had the we had the troll ball on the line. I was gonna let him on, let him have it this this week. He hung up. <laughs> Call nephew, back in, nephew. troll ball. <laughs> your nephew. <laughs> Yo, Rob, yeah. we, we 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 love you, even if we don't respect you. We love you. Yo, um, hold, let's get with... back to be often in his bias, uh, his biasness. Borderline yeah. <laughs> Hall of Famer, okay? You, 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 don't <laughs> you don't believe that. Yo, cuz. Yo, cuz. You don't believe that, cuz. I think he was a very good corner. Um, There's a lot of very good corners. Any, any chances he had at even coming close to the Hall of Fame were wiped out by where he played. Um. Yeah, like I, I don't see it either. I, I, you know, we can do, yo, we can do a, you know, Jimmy can, he can, he can key can one up. I can hook that up for you. Yo, I, I, I yeah. guarantee when I hook it up, be awesome. Be like, hell no, post what? <laughs> <laughs> he gonna, he gonna change his mind. Yo, when this, yo, is it gonna be one of those things when we put it out there? The people gonna be like, is this a real question? Is it a real question? <laughs> yo, put it like this: when the story of the game is told, boy's not even a bookmark. Damn. <laughs> Yo, you yeah, playing Cleveland, B? Like, what? Yeah, come on, man. I mean, Joe Thomas might be a Hall of Famer, but it's different for offensive linemen. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at his stats now. He's played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven seasons. Twenty eight. He's got twenty interceptions, two touchdowns. Wait, he only twenty eight. Uh, yeah, he only twenty eight. Uh, yeah, he got a the shot then. The so right season. now, not even close. Six in, six in Cleveland. <laughs> All right, let's go to let's go to the phone lines real quick before we give out our NFL awards because right. we got some people on the line. We got the homie Rob out in Cali. What's going on, Rob? What's up, Cub? What up, Cub? What up, bro? Hey, hey, can y'all hear me? What up, Cub? Yeah, we can we hear you. Rock. Get your, Yo, get your troll on. We can hear you. This War Room Sports Yeah, Yo, that's your boy, Big Rod, a.k.a. You know, Trust your troll. Big and Little at the same time. Yo, it's your boy, Yo. Big Rod, a.k.a. Yo, from Philly to Cali, Kobe, Wilt Chamberlain, Please. and, you know, the French. This is boy, Big Rob, a.k.a. Put some hot sauce in my cheesesteak. What's good, y'all? What's good? No, Yo, B, who eat hot sauce on their cheesesteak, though? What's good, Negative Rob? Only fan I know who calls in, who 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 gets on social media to bash the quarterback after a gutsy win like that. After a win, what's going on? He hating after a yo, win. Yo, he wants he want, he want the Eagles to lose so bad so he could say, I no, "Told I y'all, no, I Nick Foles is not." The thing is, B, when's the last time this dude actually listened to us though? Because he's pressing this issue. Yo, we ain't said nothing real about Nick Foles in like three or four years, but he keeps pressing the issue as if we've said recently this dude is this good or that good. All we said I, was if you're going to have a backup, if your quarterback is going to go down, I don't mind having a Nick Foles behind him. He's been successful in this green uniform, and he remains successful. No matter how mediocre he's played over the past few weeks, for some reason – the team gets W's when he's back there. But that's not enough for you. You wanna keep you wanna keep going on social media and lying to people like me and B Austin said this dude was so great. I, I don't get your you know, what's your angle, homie? Here's the thing. W's is good, but it's like a boss told me I look for perfection, I look for consistency. 
And the only thing about Nick Foles is I don't, I just don't see a consistency. I mean, here's the thing. You're right. A backup is a, is a good, is, is somebody who plays when somebody's down. But listen, man, we're in the playoffs, dude. This is a Super Bowl team, and our crucial element is not there. So you you, you can see how. So he didn't know, have a good game? He had a good game. I'll, I'll give Nick Foles that. And, and, you and ain't give that. Who don't give him that on social media? He, and then you he, come he, here he had, and you want to agree with everything we game. say. Yo, he, he, he had a, he had a good game for a guy who didn't throw a touchdown. Yo, let, let me ask you. Let me ask it you doesn't question. matter if, okay. if your team gets down there and you run the ball. It doesn't matter who throws a touchdown and who let doesn't throw you. a touchdown. Let me ask you a the question. The team won. Wow. He didn't turn the ball over. Of course, you came and pointed out his worst throw. Yeah, that probably should have been an interception, but it wasn't. It was a completion for let a first ask, down. No, no, hold bad on, throw. Let me, ask, let me ask Rob a question. Hating ass Rob. But I saw two or what's three good, bad throws out of like what's 40. What's a good completion percentage and what's a good passer rating? You tell me. I want to I wanna know. What, what What is good to you? Well, Whatever well, Nick good, Foles now, didn't listen, do in a particular listen, game. Listen, listen, listen. Let, 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 yo, 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 relax, relax, relax. Me, me, trash and no, I'm relaxed on, on my his, own show. Me, 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 me trash and foes <laughs> on his on that game. It's it for, like 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 Nas said. I made you look. You were slated on page of my rhyme book, yo. Don't take what I huh? say as seriously, okay? So don't take what I say as seriously. Now, I. I, I just want to see. You see, I say that here, but I'm you don't say that in front of people on Facebook. I ain't going for that. No, but no, here's what's wait, a wait, good complete complete percentage. Don't worry about it. We're going to take this rate? audio and we're going to plaster it all a on good, our page. A good complete a good complete percentage to me noodle, yo. is is about. Wait, 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 wait. Repeat the question. And a good what's a good rate? completion percentage and what's a good passer rating? In a in a game, give me a good completion percentage for a QB and a good passer. Good completion percentage to me, sixty six. Passive okay. percentage, one ten. One ten. One ten is yeah. well. Listen, first of all, if you're only completing fifty six percent of your passes, you ain't gonna have no, a one ten pass. No, what no, is you talking about? I said sixty six. No, he said sixty. Oh, I was about to say. All right, so Nick, <laughs> Nick Foles, Nick Foles so that's good. That's that's your off. idea of good. That's a, yeah, that's Nick, a great Nick game. Foles is seventy. Nick Foles is seventy three, and I'm gonna let you think about passer rating again because one ten is damn near perfect. So <laughs> there's no no hero that you ever had at QB has ever passed close to a passer rating of one ten. So I'll let you rethink that. What's a good passer rating for a QB? Okay, okay, oh, 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 okay. But let's talk about this game. This game coming up. And, <laughs> and, and, and listen, what yo Nick Foles' passer rating is one hundred two point seven in the playoffs. His completion percentage is seventy three. He averages two hundred and twenty yards passing per game in the playoffs. I'm gonna let you look that up. I'm gonna give you those stats again, and I want you to bear them in mind. Seventy three percent completion, one hundred two point seven passer rating, and two twenty a game. Passing yards. All right, go and ahead. the most now, important which, 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 thing, and the most important thing, both of his playoff right. games, both of his no playoff sense. games, he left his last drive with a lead, and it almost and happened turnovers. again this season. You would have, you would have came back and blamed that whole game on him somehow. When again, with four minutes left, he left with a lead, and they got all the way down to the two yard line before the defense decided to step no up. No turnovers. But somehow, if they would have got no that turnovers. last two yards. I could hear you, we lost because of Nick Foles. And it would have been the same as the last time when they played the Saints, when they scored, left the, left the field with a lead, kicked off, let Sproles get the midfield, and let Breeze easily go down there and get a, a, a field goal attempt on us. Yo, stop wow. coming to the page, talking all this madness, and then calling us up talking about, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. Yo. I'm just playing. Don't take my Yo. stuff seriously. Wow. Be serious. Because wow. you call he everybody no else on there a troll. Exception. So you're admitting to us that you're trolling because you're not even serious about what you come to our page to say. Yeah. He's, He's on your team. Root for the dude. Kill him later. When he makes the mistake that, that helps us lose, then kill him. But you, the way you talk to us, is like you are hoping for him to make that mistake. 
Shoot, you know, we thought Donovan McNabb was overrated. But as lifelong Eagles fans, we've never in our lives rooted for that man to fail until he was a Washington, whatever that team is called. Yo. <laughs> no, or until he was a Minnesota I didn't think Viking. He was overrated. I thought he was trash. But go ahead. I mean, <laughs> the point, point is, I didn't root against him. I wanted to win that Super Bowl. I wanted to win that Super Bowl in 2004 almost as if I was playing in it. And the bull turned the you ball over bull? four times. No, nah, I ain't muted. I don't wow. know. He disappeared. He ran away. He didn't want that work. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. I don't know where Fred is. Let's take this call from the homie Tobias, and then we'll give out our award so we can move on to some some other stuff, or, or especially give our picks for this upcoming weekend as well. Um, Tobias, what's going on, man? You're in the war room. What's going on, gentlemen? What's up? You, yeah, yeah, you man. Had to beat up. Hey. You had to verbally beat up Rob. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Hey, you, you know, Fred's getting ready to get his Make America Great Again hat to cheer on the MAGA boys <laughs> this weekend. Uh, <laughs> hey. Well, let Jimmy hey. hear you saying that. I know the MAGA boys, boy. <laughs> Trump will be, oh, be in the locker room. I but here's the thing, oh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's the thing, guys. You know, I know, like, Rob, maybe down Nick Foles and, like, you know, Minnesota fans at Case Ken who I, who I want paid. But here's the thing. But, but, you know, like, Eagles fans, like, Rob got to understand. He got to thank this organization for understanding the concept of team building. And uh, they got a team where, hey, you got to back up, back a hold down the fort. That's what that's the role of the backup quarterback is to hold down the fort and not be a dumpster fire. Also, they got a big-time defensive line, a good defense overall, where in case a backer comes in, the weather gets cold, they keep it close. A good offensive line, and the GM is bold because he got Jay and Johnny for a fifth-round pick. Now, I wish my general manager, the Buccaneers, <laughs> would have a blankety blank, 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 blank vision and a coach that had a clue. But Tobias, anyway. You know, uh, Tobias, you know we love you, man. Like, we, we, we really do. You are part of the family and all that, but – you do root for the Alabama Crimson Jets. <laughs> hey, at, 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 hey, at least I'm honest about it. At least I was. Hey, at least I'm honest about it. Hey, listen, I, man, I, I know they what I'm, I, 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 I'm like, yo, how you gonna talk that trash when um the MAGA, the actual MAGA in command, actually comes to y'all game? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, like man, the only hey, one he's ever hey. come to as president. Hey, man. You know, that's why I said we gave him the good seats, too, by the way, because, you know, they ain't want no angry tweets. And uh, plus, Nick Saban had to keep getting that mortgage paid also. But uh, <laughs> but, 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 but oh, the thing man. is, though, for team, but I do wish that, like, like, fans, if the Eagles win or lose, the organization did a good job of building a team. And it's not just signing fancy name free agents. And, and that's what I wish more NFL teams are general manager to get a clue about. And and I think Doug Peterson's come a good way as a head coach too. He's he's, oh, yeah. he's, he's Doug he's doing all right. He was um <laughs> there were people in his own city <laughs> like complaining when he got hired saying it's the worst hire ever in the NFL. I didn't like, say that. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold like Washington hired. hired Washington hired Jim Zorn. And they <laughs> they coming at my hold man Doug like it, that. It gets better. <laughs> Rich Cole tight anybody? <laughs> well, Buddy well Ryan, Rich Kotai was just trash. Like they think it was. I mean, they think they think Peterson never should have been hired. Like he just wasn't coach material, wasn't head coach material. I think yeah. Kotai, you know, they thought he was a coach, but he was just he just ended up being trash. He actually got a job after Philly, so that was that was the crazy part. <laughs> Hey, you know, I, I got to chime this NBA thing real quick before I go. Every time this year, you hear your boy Dick Wright and Colin Cowherd and the rest of the bronze sexuals keep saying, Stephen A., oh, yeah, Cleveland going to make a move. Cleveland going to get Anthony Davis. And I'm like, why in the hell would New Orleans trade Anthony Davis got three or four years left of his contract and they're in the playoffs? And no. why in the hell would Cleveland be able to give up? I really, but, I really but what's more important, it. Tobias, is the fact like if y'all really think your man is is that good and and they speak on him the way they speak on him all throughout the season, why are they always clamoring for Cleveland to make a move? Nor help. Season. 
Yo, yeah, all like, I can like, is, all call I can in some more that. troops. Like I thought he was I your, need, you know, yo, he was that dude. Me. We need more talent. Listen, hey, man, <laughs> Nick, you know, Nick you know Wright kills me, though. has no credibility he because he wishes he to be a LeBron James sex doll. Like that's his whole <laughs> desire in life. Um, the other dude, even Shannon Sharp, it kills me and pains me to see him just give over his masculinity and humanity when discussing LeBron James because he does such a good job in other areas uh, of, the, of the show. But, man, they lose so much credibility when talking about LeBron. It's, it's, Not really. Shannon, Shannon is my cousin because he's a TV activist. Like it's not even about LeBron for me. Just anytime he actually speaks about sports, like he don't really seem like he know what he's talking about. <laughs> you, you know what? Though I say this though. Uh, the thing is though, what people don't realize, I think Hank say he like a uh, a locust. I go one more because I'm out bam. I know this creature very well. The bull weevil. Where well, they destroy the whole cotton field. <laughs> it destroys everything. LeBron kill. Look look how many draft picks they gave up. Two first round picks for Mozgov. You know, they came with all these first round picks and the the older yeah, thing the, do. <laughs> that cover get Barry out. Listen, I'm gonna I'm yeah. give it I'm gonna give it to you I'm gonna give it to you even raw or pause. Um if LeBron <laughs> is destroying if if he's the bull weevil of the Cleveland Cavaliers, that's because he shook hands with Gilbert and he's trying to buy that franchise. He wants it at the lowest yeah. price possible. So All right, he here's my thing, right? Yo, Lou I, as, a, as a fan, the if, LeBron, if LeBron came to my team and then destroyed us for a couple of years after the fact, but we got a chip, I think I'd be okay with that. <laughs> you know you would. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how, how how long your team was starving, for one. I mean, Jimmy, you aren't. Come on, your team got more. No, no, no I mean, I know, I know, you I know. Like, gotta, in terms of, in y'all terms, definitely got to sell y'all soul for the ball. But just in general, I, I think about this in every sport. I don't care if it's basketball, baseball, football. Like it doesn't matter what it is. Like a championship is worth like years of mediocrity. Like it just, it just is. Like yo, I still think about the 2008 Phillies and like that's damn near a decade ago. <laughs> but you know what I think though? I think with basketball. It's so – like in football, you can bounce back because it's not hard to make a trade. Things like that. Basketball, they make it so hard to even make a trade. You only have but so many players that's even worth a flip coming out of every draft because everybody's 19. And so – and your draft position is determined by a ping pong ball. <laughs> you yeah, know? but, you don't, even, and, but and you, I, you don't have to build to the draft. I mean, you, I mean, it's good to build to the draft, but, yo, you just, you just got to like, you know, you gotta, it's an arms race every year. Got to get you a couple free agents and you're back in business. Who? Who? Uh, Otto Porter? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> y'all, y'all, I'm I'll mess with you, Jimmy. I'll give you a hard time. No, no. no I'm not even doing that. Otto Porter is going to probably end up in um, Golden State. But go ahead, though. But I'll say this. Now nah, they type like Yandre George and Lou Williams. Why would the Clippers give that up during the playoff race for, the, for a Brooklyn pick? It may not be number one. <laughs> And, and, and they, we know are, they, are they are they and, really in the playoff race though? Yeah, and you gotta understand <laughs> but, but, also to buy like no contracts don't matter. When cats want out now, it don't matter what their contract they is. They want out. Yeah, and, so and it don't even matter also, what their contract is. And I say this also. Doc Rivers don't want to coach young players except his son Autism Rivers, and I said it the way I said it. Uh <laughs> you know. But the pro but <laughs> that's the only young player he likes. He, did, Yo, he don't Mickey, like young Mickey, players. Mickey said, your dad gave you your money. You ain't self-made. Like, you know, all yeah, the NBA, it's, it's though. So, you ain't self-made. Yeah, hey, it's no so, so who wants – want, I'll say this before I go. Who in the hell wants Tristan Thompson? Like people going to take him. I ain't know Jeff Green was still in the league. My well, homie Derrick Rose, he can't even – The Kardashians want him. Hey, hey, mm-hmm. hey mm-hmm. Khloe Kardashian. Kardashian. Tell the Kardashians to buy a team now. Tell them to hey, buy a hey, team. Be honest about that they, one? they mess around, go out and do it. Like, damn it. Chloe was like, <laughs> this, Chloe was like, this is my last shot to find a sucker. And I'll take, I'll take this big goofball. That's all that was. Uh, but I'll say this and I'm out. I think what happens is, I think what's going to happen is LeBron realized that he's not going to win. But everybody's trying to get the super team model. The problem is Golden State, the parts fit. There are no ball dominant players on that team. They're all guys who could play without the ball. All these other teams got ball dominant guys who got to stop being ball dominant. So go to state the parts fit. And I think no, that's we, what we've said that on, we've said that on here like for the last three years essentially. Um, even right, before they got KD. Ball dominant. 
Yeah, I mean, but the thing yeah. is, like, when you look when you look at the rest of the league and you look at the star players there, there is nobody else that fits like that. Like, you really can't. Like, even if LeBron was to go to Houston, not the same. It, it's just really – it's going to be hard to beat that team in general, like, over the next couple of years because of what you said. Like, you just can't, you can't even build the team. Yeah, and you know what, Jim? And the thing is also, the team that gave them so much trouble, they just had no wing players, was Memphis. Because they didn't try to Listen, out man. Golden State, Golden State. They put Mark Gasol and everybody's favorite bouncer, everybody's favorite goon, Zach and Zebo out there. They beat them up. Uh, they just I'm had gonna tell you what Everything is going to change once Lamelo gets to the league. Then they're going to be going to single handedly, <laughs> he's going to single handedly bring down Golden State, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, but hey, you guys have a good one, man. Thanks for taking my call, good brothers. All yes, right. sir. Tell the boy Lamelo. Yo, story right there, right. man. It's all it's about Lamelo coming in and destroying this uh this Goliath, man. So so uh B Austin in the championship round, who wins this weekend? Who you got in the two games? Oh, uh, so um, I got <laughs> Oh oh, speaking of that, hold on. Shout out to Skyview Kev in the um chat room. He he was saying uh First of all, he said, if I'm Mr. Congenial, Drew Brees, I'm cussing Marcus out. Um, then he spoke about Joe Hayden. He said, Deion Sanders thinks Joe Hayden is the truth. Um, and I asked him if the truth means Hall of Fame. He said, I don't know, but if arguably the greatest corner of all time certifies you, may have to look at that. Um, no, I pretty much disagree. Like, no, you sound doesn't. like one of these young corners who act like, you know, Deion is a great player. Doesn't necessarily Dion likes mean whoever, Dion likes whoever gives him a blumpkin. All right, I was about to say Dion is a, he's he's a, another he's dude whose opinion sometimes is based on who's cool with yeah, him. Yeah. Who's cool with yeah, his home. Not, not only not only that, I will. But I even will, so, I don't care if he's the greatest is, anything. I don't mean not me. opinion. Well, first this off, is not first me, off, this is not me knocking Joe great. Hayden. I'm not knocking Joe Hayden. Nah, you don't disrespect yourself. Uh, I'm not I knocking Joe Hayden. I'm just – I will say that Dion likes you if you wear number 21. Dion likes you if you give him a public blunkin. And if, if you kiss the ring, style, if you kiss the yeah, ring, yeah, it'll yeah. make if you, you seem better ring, than you are. Yeah, he does. He does do that. He does do that. Is he I mean, that's just but, but even if that's not what he was doing, that don't mean what he's saying makes sense. I mean, this is true. Michael Jordan said <laughs> right. Joe Dumars is the greatest. <laughs> right. He's still a man. <laughs> Still a man, and, and like I said, I, I think Joe Hayden is a very good corner. Just based on what he's accomplished so far, I, I just think know, I, would, I couldn't put I just, him in the Hall of Fame. But I, I, the I fact know, that I he know. is only still twenty eight, he has a, a shot to. I know. I was just I was just saying that because I know that B. Austin, B. Austin is a personal relationship with him, oh, and yeah. he tried to yeah. he tried to slide that in there like we wasn't gonna call him out or not. Yeah, you know, borderline Hall of Famer. That he kept talking like he wasn't gonna <laughs> catch the fact that he just called Joe Hayden a Hall of Famer. Borderline, I said borderline, borderline. Yeah, I know. I think you're gonna get in. There, I know. Bold, bold and italic was the word borderline. I get it. <laughs> Scott, you said is Champ Bailey Hall of Fame. I sm- yo, he said, shut I, up. He said I believe. He said I believe Daryl Green is already Hall of Fame. Similar numbers. Similar numbers to who? Uh, Dar- Joe Hayden. Daryl Green, yeah, similar to similar to Joe Hayden. Daryl Green. Okay. Yeah, but you. Daryl Green, Green put those numbers up in a league that wasn't pass happy, too. Right, that's, I was about to say that. I was like, you know, football has changed a lot since Daryl Green. So, you know, that's not really like, my, that's like, similar that's numbers. Like, that's, like, like, <laughs> that's like making 100 three-pointers. What are you really saying? Can I, can I, can I, ask, I mean, can Matt I Stafford got question? similar numbers to Dan Marino. You want know, <laughs> to make that comparison? <laughs> I'm gonna ask, it's a I'm gonna different ask you. league, my dude. Different league. I'm gonna ask a question, and I and I know and I know you're gonna actually open the page on this, Jimmy. I I don't know who is better, and this this may not be a case for Daryl not being in the hall. Eric Allen or Daryl Green? Eric Allen is a better cover corner, man. Um, Yo, Daryl Green gets in the say hall. Say that in front of anybody from Washington, fast, though. They might stop he you the to fast, death. He was in the fastest man. Uh, he was in. Yo, he was in the fastest man competition. He won all the time because he was dumb fast until he was like fifty. And and he smiled a lot and he didn't curse. And white people love the fact when you smile a lot and you they can put you on the <laughs> golf tournament and all that. I'm not saying he wasn't a great corner. I was about to say he's, he's a great overrated. corner. I ain't gonna knock he, that. He, but, but he gets overrated. 
He gets old. Like, yeah. people will ask, like, is he better than – who was better, him or Champ Bailey? And to me, that's not even a question. Like, Champ was way better than Daryl. Daryl – Eric Allen was way better than Daryl. There's a lot of corners I feel like were better than Daryl, but he gets the nod because he has the Joe Dumars effect. I mean, he also played a long time. I mean, he, he played a solid. long time, and he was Ball. good. He was on some. He was on some That's bowl teams. He was on some championship. So he, he has. He, he has a lot time. working for him. Not just purely what he did on the field, but the longevity in this type of sport. You know, that always has to count for something. I mean, but, yeah. I mean, no, it's, it's I agree. the same some thing. Some of those uh, dudes are better. It's a, it's the same thing as Art Monk. Like Art Monk, um, when he retired with like number two and everything. And when you break it down, I mean, he pretty Art much Monk, was like no, no. Frank Art Gore. Monk he was number better. one. Art yeah. Monk was better at what he did than Daryl Green was at what he did. I don't know about that. That's debatable. I don't, I don't know. know about that. I don't know about that. I was about that. to say, I don't know. Because as you Art see, Monk as, as the receiver stimulator. position evolves, you know, Art Monk starts to look a little bit overrated, too. Yo, dog, <laughs> Art Monk was nothing but an accumulator. He was with, he was with Frank Gore is now. Like, he played a, 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 a gazillion years. <laughs> Oh, no, my, man, no, my man, my man caught for seven hundred <laughs> yards, but he did it. He did it for like thirty-four years. Yeah, in a pass happy league, I think he would have gotten more yardage. I, you're, you're kind of. I don't think either of them dudes was what DC fans make them to. Well, be. I think first off, you like to slam. Yeah, DC I mean, but you can to you be can. fair. We can't <laughs> knock their fans. These dudes were on teams you know, that bought them championships, so they're going to love them for life. He does McNabb, yo. Huh? What did you say? B. Austin takes more shots at D.C. fans than he does McNabb. Anything to poop on a D.C. fan, he's there for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you hear yeah. for all D.C. slander, yo. Listen, we can, name top, we can name top corners, like top corners, and, and Daryl Green's not going to crack the top ten. Not he's not. Is Art Monk going to crack the top ten wide receiver? No, no, he gonna no, pile on not. him now. No, he's not. He's not. He's not. You're right. He's not. Yo, Art Monk. Art Monk ain't a top twenty wide receiver of all time. What about Joe Hayden? He's top ten. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he's better than Daryl. He's better, he better than Daryl Green. Borderline. Dion said he was Yo, nice. <laughs> Yo, borderline. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so but who wins this weekend, man? We got we got to get this um, out of the way. Jackson Jacksonville, tripping, and <laughs> I probably am tripping. I just hate Boy so much, man. He the greatest, and I hate him. Uh, he ain't the greatest. Yeah. I'm a I'm gonna go the with greatest Brady. team. I'm gonna go with Brady. Ooh. And I'm gonna go with Brady and 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 Case Keenum. They gonna win. They gonna Brady win. and Case. You think they gonna walk up in the link and push us around? Um. I don't think we're gonna be able to score enough points. Uh, they gotta play against three to two. Philly's defense as well. Yeah. Um. I don't know, man. Like this is the matchup I wanted, so I guess I can't. Complain about it now. Like, if we were playing New Orleans, I'd, you know, unequivocally be saying we're going to take that L. Um, I'm, I'm, I think Philly, um, it, it's, it's one of those games that's shaping up to be a defensive battle. Now, when we say that prior to the game, then people end up scoring like 40 points apiece. Um, if you look at the running game, you know what I'm saying, if, if your man can hold on to the ball, you know, you got a Jai – you got Blunt, you got Clement. You know, on their side, you have Latavius Murray and you have Jarek McKinnon, who's a very good third down back, but nothing scary, you know, going up against the number one rush defense. This was the team that I always wanted them to match up with because I just keep thinking at some point Case Keenum is going to Has make to be the, the, the backup mistake that's going to bury his team. And he made a few, he made a couple yeah, he last did. week. He did. And they just got so lucky. Um, I think, you know, if the Eagles defense can get to him, man, I, I think they can go ahead and move on. But I think it'll be against the Patriots. Um, but you know what me and B do. We never really pick the Eagles. So the fact yeah, that I'm I picking them is hard. means it's the season hard. is over. It can't. It can't. <laughs> I, I understand what you're saying, and I do. I would much rather face 
this Vikings team than a Drew Brees led team period. If it's in New Orleans, LA or New York, like I don't want to play Drew Brees because he's Drew Brees. Um, and if, and if we somehow could get a lead on them, which forces Case Keenum to be a gunslinger and throw the ball. Cause Case Keenum in Case Keenum's mind, when he looks at himself in the mirror, he sees Brett Farr. People, I don't think people really realize that. Case Keenum thinks that he's more than he is, and you have to think that as a professional athlete. Right. He hasn't been put in a position to be the gunslinger that he believes he is, and if he was, I think he'd throw us the ball. He might even throw the ball with the green hair, the ball. I, I, so, so I think if we could get it, but we can't score a lot of points. I was about to say, so, and, but that was the Eagles' M.O., during the regular season with Carson Wentz. They got early leads and kind of like the old defense of the Colts with Peyton Manning, those guys were allowed to just tee off on the quarterback and and cause havoc and make the quarterback make mistakes. Right. So we're going to have to find a way to somehow buck the trends of the last four weeks and get some points on the board and get some points on the board early. But I I, I think – somehow, some way that it'll happen. Um, I don't like the fact that this is the the NFC championship game that I'm picking because I'm just – I'm really picking this just from an Eagles-Vikings perspective. Like the fact that it's the NFC championship, it automatically just makes people think, oh, this dude picking his team to go to the Super Bowl. I'm really picking this as an individual game. Like it's a little surreal to me that it's for a trip to the Super Bowl because beginning this season, come on, eight and eight. I love – I love playing the underdog role, and if there was some level of expectation with this, I would be petrified. But I feel like I picked the Eagles to be third in the division, so I feel like we're playing with house money. And I know you don't take for granted going this deep in the playoffs or going this deep into a a top 10 IG model, but I feel like if we – analyzing it just on its merit, if we had Carson Wentz, I would pick us to win this game. Like, there's no way I'm not pick, but I and I don't. I don't want to knock Nick Foles because I believe we haven't seen the best Nick Foles there is. I just don't know in this environment and in this these circumstances if we I just can need it twice. The, best, the best Nick Foles, right? I, so I and against this defense, if I you have what, to though? get it, athlete for athlete. The Vikings defense may be a little bit more athletic, especially along that back line. They have Xavier Rhodes. You know what, though? Last week he came out kind of shaky and then (laughs) settled into a groove. We just need that groove to come early. You know know where the groove comes from, Deb? The groove comes from your man Newman, the Dallas cornerback that won't retire. Yo, he's their slot corner. So if you get Nelson, the African, on him and you got Ertz, lined up on linebackers, that's where Nick Foles can make his money because can no 40-year-old man guard Nelson Aguilar. Like, he got you, good safeties, though. <laughs> Mike Boyd back there at night. All right. On the other side, you know, Jalen Ramsey has promised that they're going to beat the Patriots and they're going to win the Super Bowl. Um, he's a little excited. <laughs> because presumably Pittsburgh may have looked past them again, or that's the excuse that people are going to keep giving Pittsburgh. This team keeps beating them <laughs> and, you know, doing it in dramatic fashion, either blowouts or just scoring a whole lot of points on them. Um, uh, until proven otherwise, I'm just, I'm still going to have to go with Bill Belichick, Brady, oh, yeah. and, those, and those boys yeah. and uh, the Patriots. So I guess – by default, what I'm calling for is a rematch of the 20, 2005, oh, yeah. well, 2004 mm-hmm. season, 2005 uh, Super Bowl. So we'll see how that, that you, goes down. Have you had an opportunity to watch Jacksonville play? Like how many defense? How many games have you watched Jacksonville play, Doug? Oh no, I've, I've watched Jacksonville. I, I like Jacksonville. I watched them he coming a lot at, this season. He coming at I mean, you know, I sit down here. Tough. Yo, that yo, their defense, having grown up loving Buddy Ryan, having seen the 2000 Ravens, just loving defense, yo, they're something special, man. Like I, defense, I put it this way. On the AFC side of things, 
there was not going to be a bigger challenger to Tom Brady in the offense <clears throat> than this Jacksonville defense. So yeah. in no way am I expecting, you know, them to do what they did to the Titans Yo, they because get... the defense is just not having it. I'm just thinking the Patriots defense, though not stellar, good. is good enough to <laughs> maybe <laughs> put Damn some clamps board. on the Jacksonville <laughs> side of things. But they still got to deal with Fournette, yeah. and you never know what you're going to get from Bortles from game to game. So yeah, it you, should be you, you coming at you coming at them on some disrespectful stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Huh. You're right. You're right. Huh. You're right. Yeah, you grown man talking <laughs> to me like that. <laughs> you, you tell me. Some stuff. You tell me. <laughs> Yo. All right, so real quick, we'll do this real quick. Let's give out these NFL awards. And look, this is this is gonna like, I think I think a lot of this stuff is gonna turn heads for people because people are just not used to me picking the home team for anything. But let's 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 start these NFL awards real quick. You want to just run yours down, or you want me to run mine down first? Or you want me to, uh, how you want to do that? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to run mine down. I'm going to run mine down. Good. You just um, run it down, and I run yeah. mine down. Shout out shout out to uh, Doug Marone, uh, who we were just talking about, his, his squad. Shout out to home home team, Dougie P. Uh, shout out to Mike Zimmer. But my coach of the year is Sean McVay because he's 20-something and a head coach. Um, comeback player of the year, Keenan Allen. Nobody else. Can we take a timeout, B? Yes. Yes, sir. Because we got another one. Uh, Skyview said, wait a minute. Isn't Nick Foles only two years removed from being anointed the savior? No. Who I don't know who you've him? ever talked to or heard. Yo, who Philly said those fans words. hate it, dude. They, I was about to say, the Eagles fans, fans did not no, like Nick man. Foles when even when he true. was having that great season. Obviously, the <laughs> staff, the organization, and the coaches didn't feel him either. Because after he had that season, they got rid of him halfway through the next season when he got hurt when the team was 6-2. and two, Sanchez Yo. comes in, ruins the rest of it, and they get rid of Nick Foles. I don't, I don't know I was who the only, you've ever spoken like to who said Nick only, Foles was the I was like one of the only people that was kind of a Nick Foles supporter. Um, he coming at y'all some disrespectful stuff. Yeah, he <laughs> he is. Like, we ain't grown men. Um, I I like Nick Foles, but I was felt like I always felt like I was in the minority. Um, Savior? <laughs> yeah, never. Nobody nobody banged with Nick Foles like that. Not even Chip <laughs> This boy uh, got hurt while he was six and two and fans thought that Mark Sanchez might just be a better option. <laughs> no. That's not Savior talk right there. Um <laughs> So any anywho, um, coach of the year Sean McVay because he's like 22. Uh, comeback player of the year, <laughs> Keenan Allen lost his knee and his leg, and now he has seven 100 yard games. And every time I look up, he's in a defensive back's face after catching a ball and running for 20 yards, and he's not fast. Um, defensive rookie of the year, Marshawn Lattimore. Shout out to Tre'Davious and shout out to T.J. Watt. They ball. Uh, offensive Rookie of the Year, Alvin, gold in my mouth, and I'm from Africa, Kamara. Um, I thought Kareem Hunt was going to get it. Uh, the the asterisk here would be Deshaun Watson. He would have gotten it had he not lost his leg in a car accident. Um, defensive Player of the Year, Calais Campbell. Shout out Aaron Donald, Cam Jordan, and Bobby Wagner, but Calais got it. Offensive Player of the Year for me is Todd Gurley. Honorable mention to A.B., Le'Veon, and DeAndre. <coughs> um, my MVP, I did a co-MVP. Uh-oh. Carson Peyton Wentz. Manning and, um, Peyton Manning and, and Aaron McNair. <laughs> yeah, and Aaron McNair. <laughs> Carson Wentz and Tom Brady are my co-MVPs. Uh, honorable mention is Russell Wilson because if without Russell, they would have folded that entire franchise. Um mm. Executive of the year, shout out to Howie they, Roseman. They, they didn't make the playoffs though, so fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <clears throat> That's it for me. Go ahead, run it, Doug. All right, so my, my coach of the year was between three candidates Doug Peterson, Sean McVay, and Mike Zimmerman. No, no, four, and Doug Marone. Um, and this is not because of where three of them still are. I'm going strictly on the regular season. I'm actually going to go 
hometown with this. I'm going to give it to Doug Peterson because prior to the season, like I was just explaining to somebody, not too many people picked the Eagles to go more than 8-8, eight and 9-7. Eight, and seven. You had people in his own hometown last season, or hometown of Philadelphia, saying that this is probably the worst coaching hire in NFL history. And a year later, I'm trying not to, you know, you know, harp on the fact that he's in the, the you know, the NFC championship game because this is a regular season award, but he did guide that team to a number one seed when many people, including fans of the team, thought he was going to be third or fourth in the entire division. I'm going to get at the Dougie like P. 29, though. Comeback player of the year, I agree with you. Keenan Allen, for me, it was between Keenan and Gronk. Um, defensive rookie of the year, shout out to Tredavious White. I'm going Marshawn Lattimore as well. Offensive rookie of the year, through the halfway mark, I had Kareem Hunt. Um, he still balled, led the league in rushing um, and all of that, but their second half, there was a you know, bit of a swoon in that team, and I'm going to give it to Alvin Kamara because he, you know, that offense, along with, you know, the defense playing playing pretty well, the Saints went on a nice little run in the second half of the season, and he couldn't be stopped in the backfield, outside of the backfield. Or returning um, kick. Yeah, he, he just, he's a do-it-all type dude. Defensive player of the year, Calais Campbell. Um, you've seen what his presence has done for that Jacksonville team. Offensive player of the year, I'm going to go Todd Gurley. And the MVP, I ain't giving Cole nothing. I'm going hometown with this. My man led the league in touchdown passes even even after missing three games. And the Eagles still went 2-1 and one when he was down. And the one loss was a 6 nothing loss to the, to the Cowboys when the Eagles basically threw the game by resting a bunch of players. However, you can see the drastic difference in the not just the offense but the entire team itself without this guy in the lineup. Like points are so hard to come by when this team was maybe a top two or three scoring team in the entire league during the regular season. They were the best team in the league during third downs. That disappeared after he uh, got injured. So I'm going to go with Doug Peterson with that. So shout out to Dougie. I mean, not Dougie. Shout out to Carson and shout out to Dougie for my coach of the year. Um, hometown. people. I'm telling you, people are probably so surprised right now. B. They've never heard this much hometown out of me. I refuse to say homerism because y'all, we just don't do that. But I'm, you know, you got to be honest when that's, when that's your opinion. And it's rarely my opinion, but that's what we're going to do. So shout out to them dudes. All right. So the the ball report. I know we got to talk about the, the the ball bros and what's going on over there in Lithuania. They've had uh, three games now in the <laughs> in the um, BBB Challenge tourney where they're playing against junior teams, and they've had one game um, in the regular league with the grown men. Now, in these challenge tournaments, they're playing people who are like 16 to 18 years old, um, basically their ages, and they are shining. So that's that bodes well for, you know, a lot of us who've been saying how Europeans and people all over the world are catching up to us because of the fundamentals of the game that these guys learn early. So it's still it's good to see them get off against people their age to kind of keep – <laughs> to kind of keep U.S. basketball in the spotlight. But they, I mean, one game they had, uh, Melo had 20, 31, Jello had 29 the same game. Uh, the last game, Jello had led the team with 22, and Melo had 14. The first game they played, um, they both did pretty well in that game as well. I think it was 19 and, and 15. But when they played against the grown men, and I think there's a lot of people out there, especially people who are part of the um, BBB Stan clan, like they see these numbers and they're quick to brag about, oh, man, they're doing this against grown men. I told you they were this. I told you they were that. But they're not understanding that it's two different caliber um, of two different leagues. players that they're basically two different leagues that they're playing in. And when they played their one game against literal grown men, 
they, neither one of them got too much burn, and they both went scoreless. So I don't even think the coach trusts them enough right now to play them that much in those games. And I think, you know, the reason that they're on the team, we all know, LeVar Ball basically saved the team's finances by sending his two sons over there. So having them on the team, the jersey sales, all kinds of stuff that's going on real quick since they've been there is is basically their saving grace for being on the A team right now. But when they play with the B team, they're 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 putting it on these the, the young teenagers over there. What do y'all think? Because Jimmy, I know you've been watching too. Yeah, all I'm saying is if I see number 17 in the street, we gotta square up. Cause don't nobody come to see you, B. Like when you get the ball, give it to Lamelo and get out the way, man. I'm tired of these other dudes trying to shoot the rock. You know I what they thinking though? Reason. They thinking NBA scouts gonna be here to look at them. So I gotta get mine. Because I, I noticed exactly what you're saying. There's a few people and a few moments in some of these games where you're like, yo, dude's not even looking their way. Like, <laughs> he won't even look on their side of the court. <laughs> so it's definitely, you know, and, and it's understandable you know, why some jealousy would be number going seven, on. No, like, number they just come over here with all this fanfare. Yo, number 17 got <laughs> give me a rumble, man. Like, I ain't, I ain't tuning into you. <laughs> I'm trying to see the mother. I'm trying to see the mother. I'm Lithuanian street. Boy, I'm supporting. I'm supporting number seventeen. I'm all about the seventeen getting off and getting his shine. Um, I think this is. I think this is clownery. Um, I think this is cooning. I you bugging? Lamelo is the God. truth, yo. Lamelo let that thing go from half court and call it shot. Yeah, yeah whatever. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's funny because I guess I guess that. If I'm objective, I'm looking at this strictly financially. I think that they've he's found a formula to make money off of his sons to a point where their family could be somewhat set, even though their their, family going to be younger, cool. His younger the people boys, who order they purchase, they think. <laughs> his younger boys are not going to the league. I think that this actually hurts LaMelo's chances to make the NBA, in my opinion. Oh, you think it hurts it? Yeah, I think it hurts it. I I I think Yo, what's going on with everybody amazing. being so you outspoken about you mean see this boy's with game everybody be being so outspoken, Jim, about him and and Luke Walton and all of that, I think that hurts their chances as well. Like they, <laughs> yeah, have right. be, definitely, definitely. they have to be extraordinary to to want people to, put to, up to expect people ask, to put up ask, with him let again. Ask a, let me ask a serious question. Dev, you don't even have to answer this because Jimmy Jimmy joking. On jo- I'm like, not on joke, Le- not on joke time. You've seen, better than you've seen some real hoopers in your time. Is Bull better than Wani Wags? What? Is he better than Dewan Wagner? You said you're not asking me, right? Cause... I'm not asking you. I'm asking <laughs> I'm you. About I'm, about, I'm about to hit you with that. Is this a serious question? <laughs> Is he better than Dewan Wagner? Yes. Wow. Well, at what level? Right now, like uh, uh, he's I'm, playing I mean, in a professional league, would you would you say at this age he was he's better than Dewan Wagner was at at that age? Here's the thing, well, see that's the thing. He's so young. Like Dewan Wagner at this age was still playing like in in high school, and and it's like Melo is his he has skills. He's tall. He has skills. He's lanky. Yeah. He's very he's very immature. Um, so. And that's obvious even in his game because some of the shots he takes is like, yo, what are, why would you do that? But he still makes it. Yeah. He's a legend. Yeah. But, he has no interest in defense. <laughs> oh, yet. no. Like, I, like the last game they played, I played more defense than he did, and I was watching on Facebook. <laughs> we were <like>, watching. <laughs> <laughs> My man has no interest whatsoever. In, and don't set a pick because he's not going under or over. He's just going to the other side of the court. Like, he's going back on offense. <laughs> <laughs> he's to That's an excuse. Going, he's like, Look, well, I, he got in my I, way, so I just went down. Yo, awesome. funny thing is, B. Austin, I actually uh, thought about you, no homo, watching the game the other day because I'm like, yo, if B. Austin actually watched this kid play, you would be a fan because he plays basketball um, the way that you like to watch cats play. He lets it fly. <laughs> like, he reminds me of all the dudes you like because he lets it fly. Like, he has no interest in defense nah, and he's going to put are it we, up. Are we, are we serious right now? Like, I'm dead ass not, serious, B. I'm Yo, dead ass serious. Everybody that I like locks down, with the exception of Bubba. I was getting ready to. Yo, I was the first with name I was going to say. Like, you, you got to be kidding me. 
no, Jamal, no, no. But Crawford, Bubba, Jamal Crawford locked down. Bubba, Jamal no, Crawford locked Bubba, down. No, he don't lock down. But okay. Bubba, because I, mean, I can go through a list. Now that you said that, Bubba was not part of the list. It Let's start picking up. Man, you can't just say stuff and not be held accountable, man. Physically impossible you might for Allen Iverson to lock down. How is he? How are you? Yo, if I'm si- if I'm a six four two guard and Allen Iverson tries to guard me, I don't care if I'm like I renewable. I'm a laugh at it. And all right, but let's back and listen to what you said. You said everybody yeah. that you like like that like locked down. Me. All right, so we could take we could take Jamal and 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 AI as exceptions. Who else? Don't? Everybody well, no, else. No. Everybody else you like locked down. Yeah, Gilbert yeah, locked down. Gilbert could be up. No, that's not what I asked you. You said locked play. down. Gilbert, Gilbert plays big. No, but he locked down. He don't walk to the other side of the court when the pick comes. Yo, he don't do that. And I'm exaggerating by saying that. But my point is, everybody that you like don't lock down, dog. Yo, you name those three. All right, keep going. Who else? Chauncey, think- Chauncey, Chauncey couldn't get a run before he played D. So we can't say Chauncey. Joe, I, mean, say I, saw, like Joe, I saw Joe was a defensive specialist at one point. I didn't even know he was on your list. I, I'll give you that, though. Sam Cassell locks down. Sam D'd up. See, but you, you're not, I'm, I'm asking you talking about D'd lockdown up. defense and D'd up. Sam That's two D'd different D'd things, up. man. Sam D'd up. Sam D'd up. Yo. There ain't too many lockdown dudes anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you bugging when you say that. My Yo, point is, man, Lamo, you point said is, I like. You like said I like ratchet let the ratchet Let the ratchet You do. I do. I like to see all that. I mean, you don't count up blocks and scores at the end of the game. And listen, that's what this young boy does. This young boy lets it fly. Yo, this young boy, he's the opposite of his brother. Like, Zoe is so cautious on offense. And he's the opposite. He letting that thing go. You don't like any anything us across half court. He's letting it go. He lets the ooh out go, and that's good. And that, and so you see that translating into an NBA career. <clears throat> Maybe not. Yo, people think I be playing, very man. But I think right now. I think Jello got more to his game than all of them. I don't think he has. He ain't long, athletic you know, I don't side. think he has more long term potential than the other dudes. But at their current age. I think he has more to his game than them. Like, yeah, but he Jello like, can bully like, you down in the post. Yeah, but Jello has, has no position. Like, he has no position. Like, right. He's too small That's what I'm saying, because he can, yeah, he can go down in the post like he a power forward, but then he can come up and, and shoot the three like he's a shooting guard. But he's I too think, slow to actually play on the wing. So he's, he's like I think the only thing he can't do, he probably can't run point guard from any position. He can't run point guard, forward, anything. I think he needs to be fed. The ball. I, I think, I, which honestly, is why I, playing with his little brother is the best thing for his game. Yo, when his little I brother think, gets I think, I think Jello reminds Dev of uh, the homie Reese. Yo, <laughs> all, all I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. Lamelo to me has the most potential out of all three of them, but he def- he definitely needs to, like, you know, be trained and and and, and get some more experience. Um, and probably have a real trainer because he's he's taller than them. He's taller. They actually he's the tallest one. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy done shot. going over to the dark side. He a fan. <laughs> no, no. Don't, they, the don't they list Lonzo at like six seven? Yeah, man, come on. List. Uh, Keyword list. I mean, they they list they list they list Melo right now like six six. I thought they said so, he was like six five. Yeah, they say uh, they say they say uh, the other one six five. Okay, and now I'm seeing six six for Lonzo. So. Okay. But what I'm saying, be often it's not about going to the other side. Listen, I'm I'm very entertained by the family. I watch the reality show. I watch them every time they play a game. I'm not alone in this, by the way. I always thought I always thought that and they I don't know this Google listing Lamelo six three. That probably was last year. Um, mm-hmm. I always thought they could play. I always thought all three of them could play. Um, none of them are as good as Lavar thinks they are. But no. They they definitely can can all play, so that was never a thing for me. Um, yeah, I mean it's, it's definitely entertaining. Like I tuned in to all the games that they had that was televised, and it was it was worth the watch. Yeah, listen, man. I also watch Jam Fan when they come on TV. Be often, like I mean Zion came on TV the other day. I watched that too. <laughs> Funny thing is, they were playing Chino Hills. I know that was yo Var messed that braid up something terrible. No, <laughs> yo, ESPN, ESPN had that thing line right up like we got Zion and we got Melo and then he pulled him out of yeah. school and overseas. 
Timote Lawau Cabarro is trash. <laughs> Jesus is that human being. Tipped off. You see, I don't call him TLC no more, Jimmy. He ain't worth a nickname calling that boy Timote. I learned to say his name just because he's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> he's not getting TLC until he play better. From now, he is Timote Luwawu Cabarro. <laughs> <laughs> Take me 16 seconds to say it every time. Yo, I'm going to say it every I time. Call boy, I just call him Goonie Goo Goo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's what I'm calling it too. <laughs> all right, well, look, man, before we move on to all this other stuff, um, yeah. real quick, uh, stat of the week, Laurie Markkinen, the um, rookie from the Chicago Bulls, he is the fastest player in NBA history to reach – 103 pointers, and he's done it in 41 games. Oh, um, he's to better give it, than Jordan. Well, it took Jordan 382, but like we would say, first of all, Jordan's not a three-point shooter, and it was a different NBA back then because dudes. Yeah, were shout, just out to, uh, shout out to shout out to Hank for doing the research and and figuring out the fact that whoever made that um picture did it just to put Jordan in it because Jordan had nothing to do with the stat. This is the, see, this is the thing about the whole the Michael Jordan fans. Y'all don't see this. Why was he in that picture, yo? Oh, What's that was the, the first question I asked when I posted it. I don't What's understand why Mike was in the picture in the first place. Yo, his number was ridiculous, so it shouldn't have been in there. And he's not even in the top 50,000 of people to, like, do it. So why is he even in the picture? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? If you look at the fo- – it's still – like, it, it, it has – it makes no sense whatsoever why Mike is in it. <laughs> but when you trash, look at the man. photo – because doing that research, Hank found out that, you know, there was a lot of people ahead of a lot of those guys as well. I, no, with, I, I understand the other guys. I understand the other guys because they were just trying to show you, all right, these are some of the greatest three-point shooters that the league has ever seen, and this kid yeah. did it, you know, in, in, in this much time in comparison to them. He's 41, Steph Curry – 58 games, Ray Allen, 76 games, Dirk, 113 games, Reggie Miller, 116 games, <laughs> and Michael Jordan, 382 games. So I Why guess they went Mike from picture, these are the best three-point shooters ever, and then for some context, we got to throw in the, you know, the consensus greatest player ever. I don't know. Mike shouldn't have been in this picture. Um, I and really and don't why, understand. And why does Damian Lillard don't get no respect in the league, cuz? Right, because yeah. – See, but that's the thing, though. Even though Damian Lillard did it, he held the record before Laurie Markkinen. I don't think anybody knew that classified no Damian knew Lillard as a three-point shooter. Yo, but when I when I think about but like these the way, days, but a lot of people thing, are going to be up there because everybody launches threes. Oh, absolutely. Like your man not, is in that on the list. Robert Covington is on the list. Yeah, he is. He's like third. But here's my question. Here's my question, right? Because it's not just this. It's, it's a combination of this. It's how he gets treated on the All Star Weekend. It's oh, yeah. how his name is never mentioned. Is it because he Lonzo plays Ball has more votes than him for the All Star Game? Yo, Lonzo Ball can't shoot. Is it because so everybody's been talking game? about dude being a bust? I don't think he's a bust, but everybody's talking about he's a bust. But he's he's le- <laughs> he has more votes than Damian Lillard. Yo, my who question gives is: gives buckets it, to all the dudes who are really going to be? You yo, know, is it because he plays game. in Portland? Why does he get disrespected as such? <laughs> and shout out to Skyview. He said uh, Mello played against his son's team, and he agrees with Reggie Miller. No shot. <laughs> <laughs> Skyview, stop hating, yo. That was the old Mello. That was the new Mello. Yo, um, <laughs> Jerry, well, Skyview think... said you're pretty belligerent today. <laughs> yo, <laughs> you're hating, yo. Stop hating. My thing is, why does Damien uh, get disrespected that way, yo? He gets he gets disrespected. First of all, he plays in Portland. Like, but that was my thing. <laughs> is that what it is? Like, if he played somewhere like you know, um, in 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 the Northeast or, or in a big bigger uh, program <laughs> or school, like, yeah, everybody on Jimmy and Casey Mack is like, Jimmy is a fan. Jimmy is a fan. Jimmy is a fan. <laughs> he happy. Yo, he's, Casey Mack, like I got what, another what one. I, yo, Casey Mack, what if any of us said we're not a fan? We sit there and talk about the show and the games as they're going on. Like, why is that Jim, news? You're not allowed to be a fan if you say anything critical. You know how yo, it I works. Cri- you know, I criticize oh, them every day, all day. Like, come on, Like, man. we tell you each know, other when we say something silly. 
So like, no, no, we tell each other when we're saying something silly. So I don't understand see, why. Yo, K, yo, Casey Max, see, people like you, it was wrong with the whole world in general. It's like everybody's not. Yo, I criticize myself sometimes. Like, what the fuck I say that for? Oh, my bad. We, we didn't call the bull Uncle Var. Like, that means something. Like, you mean, yo, like. Yo, I've called him Uncle Var and a coon in the same sentence. Yo. <laughs> you, yo listen, Casey, Casey. I am a hater. Oh. This some, they're speaking for these other dudes, my bros. I'm, I hate dudes. Well, I, I think they got your position. I definitely think they got, got your position on it. Cool. Yeah. Yo, All man, right, so that's, it, the, it, that's, no, go ahead, that's go ahead. the um, stat of the week, man. So let's move on real quick. Um, y'all know the deal. Um, y'all can check out our website at warroomsports.com. If you want to call in and speak with us about any of today's topics, just dial the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted, but just press 1 if you happen to already be listening from your phone. So we're going to you know, get into some quick grind topics. Jim, you got that? Yes, sir. Let's While you're on the grind, it's brought to you by DirecTV. If you'd like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, DirecTV.com is where you go. Um, sports packages, all kinds of stuff at DirecTV. Go to DirecTV.com. And it's time to talk about what happened while you were on the grind. Booyah. Uh, yes, sir. Um, let's talk about this, right? Because, you know, you talked about your Eagles. But the Eagles fan, Eagles fan has been arrested for punching a police horse at the stadium. Um, oh, you know, man. the Eagles fans have also been called gangbangers by uh, some other uh, fans. <laughs> so um, there's a lot so... of Eagles, Eagles fan slander going on right now. Here we go, Jim. This is going to be the next thing that they talk about for 60 years. They throw snowballs at Santa. They punch horses in the face. Um, you know, uh, meanwhile, you know, I'm not saying punching a, a police horse is the smartest thing in the world, but meanwhile, you know, there's people at other stadiums are straight getting bodied in the parking lot. But if you throw a snowball at a mythical character and you punch animals <laughs> that are two times, three times your size, then you're the most despicable human beings on earth. So, you know, yeah, crazy little 22-year-old dude who was drunk, got ejected from the game. Um, they said because he was drunk and didn't have a ticket. I don't even know how he got into the game. But, um, yeah, they said he began punching. Following his ejection, he approached a mounted officer and began punching the horse in the face, neck, and shoulder area. said the officer on the horse was then struck in the legs by the male. Um, another officer came over and grabbed him, and then they placed him in custody. Maybe, and maybe that was that. Maybe he was. Maybe he had a problem with the killing of unarmed African Americans by, <laughs> by, Yo! by, by police horses. Uh, by police. Uh, <laughs> and their horse. uh, a horse is a horse, of course, of course. And or Jim, you know, horse, I mean, course. Jim and B. Or you know, if it was real serious, they just say he had mental problems. Yeah. Yeah. But if Yo, Muslim he did this, he'd be a, he'd he be a horse alone, terrorist. A lone wolf. If if a person of color did it, they would be dead for disrespecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they How shot him dead on the spot. How dare you disrespect a, a higher member of society than you? Yeah, yeah. Yo, they just shot him on the spot. That horse protects you. That horse serves. Yo, they they would have protects your freedom. On the spot. Yo, so um, <laughs> yo, he'd have got hit by the Overwatch bull with the sniper rifle. <laughs> yo, yo, Marcus well, Morris just left the game with a bloody Simmons. nose. I wonder if Ben Simmons did it. Yo, chop the tough guy, Ben Simmons. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to show that he, he ain't get, you know what I mean? He'll get murked in Philly, beefing with all yeah, the Philly he, players. Yo, 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 Ben Simmons um, been on this tough guy, John, too. We'll get into that later. But anyway, Larry Nasser has up to 125 accusers. Um, hundred and twenty-five, cuz. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's actually up to one thirty-five now. Yo, this is getting crazy. Damn. Um, he ple- he pled guilty to ten know? counts of first-degree criminal sexual conduct. This was back in November, so I believe they gave him something crazy like sixty years. And with the rest of the people stepping up, he could be sentenced to like another forty years. I don't see him making it past a year in jail before he commits suicide. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, we hear the stories about jail, first of all, and then we hear the stories about jail when you go in there with a charge of, you know, sexual misconduct with young girls. So they're going to treat him 
in a way that's going to be like vengeful for for, for society. He's he's going to come to a point because I'm pretty sure he's way too soft for where he's going to be. He's going to come to a point where he's going to get tired of getting beat up. He's going to get tired of getting raped. I I, I really like you know this is sad, but I I really can foresee us telling a story on the grind within the next year of them finding dude hanging in his cell or something. Yo, he definitely he definitely gonna get his man hymen taken. That's just a that's just a fact though. No chuck. Yeah. Yo, um mm. facts though. Like, yo, boys boys are disgrace, yo. Like a hundred and twenty come on man. Like I there's nothing else to say about that, man. Like you a Sandusky type dude, man. Sandusky didn't put up a buck and a quarter though. Like, come on, cuz. Not that, not that, not that, like, his little whatever he not got that. was any, like, yeah, like, you yeah. can't put numbers up, like, ain't like we counting, you know what I mean? Like, we used to count, never mind. You know I mean? This was, shot, shot this was crazy, crazy, man, because, you know, my they, only, my only, they trusted this dude with all of these little girls, man, and it seems like yeah. he touched every last one of them. No, there is, in fact, a good use in society for Fleece Johnson. And I would like for Dr. <laughs> yo, yo. Fleece Johnson. Yo, I That's know nice. Fleece Johnson. That shows you I spent way too much time on the internet. But anyway. Um, <laughs> Apparently, yo, Dev does too. I would like yo, to, to, to say is this a, have yo, an opportunity to story, meet man. Fleece Johnson. Yo, shout out to Adam Beasy, man. Anyway, um, let's talk about this, man. Let's talk about uh, LeBron Raymond James and Matt Barnes to reach out to Shaq's son for not getting picked to the McDonald's All-American game. And I believe that the McDonald's game has the 24 best high school players in the country. Now, Shaq's son was ranked number 28. Um, so he was borderline. He was, uh, he was um, easy as math, B. Austin, man. As B. Austin says, he was borderline anyway. So, um, you know, he didn't get in. Uh, but some people thought that he would get in because he's Shaq's son. And McDonald's was like, <laughs> no, that's, sir. That's so, all they thought. That's all they so, thought. LeBron and so them talking Barnes about you deserved like, it. Yo, he was Matt Barnes though. is like, even though his son's love the nuggets, he ain't messing with McDonald's nuggets anymore. So <laughs> hashtag no more nuggets because they, they pooped on Shaq's son. Yeah. So he's like, really, Matt Barnes? You're going to boycott McDonald's because the 28th ranked player didn't make the 24 top spots. Yo, yo it's, a, um, it's, it's, it's say easy is, math, yo. Hopefully. All I'm going to say is this. Uh, I spent a lot of time watching high school. I watch mm-hmm. high school hoops because I want to see who the next star is. Yo, a lot of these dudes can ball. Like, a lot of these cats in this McDonald's game can really ball. Like, so I never thought he was going to go to this game just based upon, like, I've watched him play too. And he's not a slouch. He can play. But, yo, this is yeah, that, that one dude. That one dude, they call him Red Sleeve Row. He's undecided. Yo, this ball right now, I think he could play in the league right this second. Like right Yo, this second, he can you play can't in the be named. You can't be named Red Sleeve Row. His name is a uh, Row. His name is Row something. It's Red Sleeve like his Row can go. Um, I wonder when I heard of this and I and I saw that LeBron and uh, the boy with the conk, um, Matt Barnes. We're taking this stand. I was wondering whether they would take a stand for Momia against Shaq and his position on. <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo. But that yo. was just me. That was the first thing I thought. It since they want to protest something. Yo, we don't like LeBron. Like we kind of know the kind of. Stuff but LeBron Jones wasn't I mean, that LeBron. bad though. LeBron Jones wasn't that bad. He said, "Look, he, he said, you know, I, I met you, whatever, but use this as motivation to get better." Like. That was just like yeah. encouragement stuff. Like, so it wasn't that, but that terrible. But that's LeBron. That's LeBron never wanting, you know, Shaq to say anything negative about him on TNT. Um, I didn't pee anything about that he, one. He hit him with he hit him with the nephew too. He said, "Nephew, listen." So you know, that's his nephew now. Even though we all know you should have made that McDonald's game, use it as motivation to prove not to those who didn't vote on vote you in, not to those who actually in the game, but more importantly to yourself that you belong. Keep grinding, studying, working daily. The light is always brighter at the end of the tunnel. Hashtag strive for greatness. Hashtag family ties. Um, at Sharif O'Neal. So, yeah, I mean, it was definitely motivational words. And you get motivational words from the best player in the NBA. That, you know, I can do a lot for a kid. Matt Barnes just totally just jumped the shark. I don't know what he's talking about. Yo, he actually yo. wrote Dear McDonald's. Like, <laughs> he wrote Dear McDonald's. McDonald's before he wrote it. Like, and and Sharif himself, he said, um, 
He said, everything can't go perfect. I just got to move on. This hurt me, but it ain't stopping me. Hashtag Scion Movement Activated. So he's just as weird as his pop was. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, all no that means is this pop probably got to probably get a check from Scion somehow. Like he probably got a Scion deal already. Like, right. like my thing is, you already have every advantage in the world. No, not this that kind of Scion. It's S A I Y O N. So it's probably like oh 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 like super yeah, Scion. Probably, probably something like oh, Twizzle. Oh okay, no, I get I get it. I know what you mean. Like super Scion, like the cartoon, like the um the yeah, anime jump. Uh, his version of Twizzle. Oh, that's not the nerd jump. What, what was what was Shaq's superhero name? Um, which one? Or was that? No, you right. No, 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 no. You, you right. No, Twiz- Twism was his little saying is the world is mine, Twism. But no, yeah, Twism, I, I, Super yeah. Science, Science like record oh, label and all that. that stuff. You mean that kind of yeah, science. But, I thought you meant All right, Super Science is like when Shaq's super superhero Science. name was Steel. <laughs> when people say they're going Super Science, that's based on the anime like joint where you go Super Science and you uh go to another level when you start drawing. It's sort of like uh when Mario when Mario gets his mushroom pause. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Listen, Shaq had a superhero movie named Steel, and I'm just going to read you. Not even former, not even former no, army else. scientist. Former army scientist. Stop, Steel. man. <laughs> oh, it wasn't a super. I was thinking about Kazam. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking about Kazam. Shaq going in. <laughs> Yo, Twism, Kazam. And Steel. Steel. Oh, oh, by the way, by the way, B. Austin, in case you want to see the boy, look the boy up, his name is Romeo Lankford. They got a red sleeve row. Like, yo, Romeo Lankford. Yo, this boy could play in the league right now. And, All right, we got to um, hurry up and get to this B-ball, though. Oh, damn. I ain't really going to let me sit there chopping it up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, Shout so, out to Brian uh, Erlacher. <laughs> yeah, Brian Ur- Erlacher's uh, baby mom suing him for 125 mil. Do Brian Erlacher even have 125 mil? No, not he even didn't cool. make that from his football career. No. Hashtag I chatty saw him all over the endorsement. But, you know, he's, he's an angler. Yeah, he man. might have invested his money well. But yeah, she's we looking for $25 million for, like, punitive yeah. damages and another $100 million basically for slander. Like, she's claiming that he's told people that she killed her ex-husband. Yo. Because her ex-husband, they had an argument one night, and she claims he grabbed a gun and just shot himself. Brian Erlacher is running around telling people that he knows that she killed her. So she basically trying to get a hundred and twenty five million yeah. for, you know, like he was like, Hold up. She, she killed her ex husband, watch what I do. I'm gonna shoot her club up. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He had they had they had a baby first. Oh oh, so she ain't telling about all the craziness after the fact. I think he was already trapped. So, yeah, they had a baby first. I think I think his kid had something to do with it. I think they were arguing, and it had something to do with custody of Brian Erlacher's son. So dude probably was like, I don't want this kid around here. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. But Yeah, you just made a whole story. <laughs> so basically, she's she she mad she that she he's, quote, unquote, painted her as a murderer. Um, yeah, she, she married. This says she later married. This is after they had a son in 05. She later married and had custody of the child when her husband, Ryan Cara George, died from a gunshot wound following an argument with her. Erlacher received temporary custody of the boy, then 11 years old, after filing an emergency motion in court and citing suspicious circumstances surrounding the incident. So it sounds like Erlacher used the boy, I mean, he, he used that incident to be able to get custody of the boy. So, yeah, they they uh. This the uh, this the black girl that he was. This the black girl he was with. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds like a lifetime. I ain't, I ain't going there. Yo, oh yo. Anyway, man. Um, Colin Kaepernick. He makes good on the final hundred k of his one million dollar pledge. Cap My bad. Just life. to cut you off real quick. That's kind of yo. dirty though. If she is like telling the truth, like to go around and. Have people paint her as a murderer just so you can get custody? That's kind of dirty, but I mean, man, <laughs> every day, be them, glo- them gloves come <laughs> off in custody battles, dog. You yeah. know what I mean, them gloves, them gloves come off, dog. And divorces and custody battles, it gets nasty. It gets yeah. nasty, yo. I've seen like, yo. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's because I mean, you think about those two situations. That's like when emotions are, uh, you know, but, people. But thinking. who is advising her that Brian Erlocker has a hundred and twenty-five million dollars? <laughs> yeah. Yo, you know they yeah, ask you, for the moon. You know, yeah, maybe they much. get the stars. You, know? you already know. You already know. 
I'm gonna ask for 125, but I settle for like one. Yo, you <laughs> ask for 125 and get 750k and be cool. And she'd be happy too. Yo, um, mm-hmm. I, I, that was a joke, by the way. I'm not trying to stand the young lady. Anyway, uh, Colin Kaepernick, um, <laughs> she you don't want no, no problem. <laughs> I don't want no parts of that, yo. Yo, all of, everything is allegedly, and this is all for entertainment purposes. Colin Kaepernick made good on his final 100k of his million dollar pledge. He's out here doing what he got to do. Um, shout to Colin Kaepernick. I wonder if Colin Kaepernick's watching the playoff games. What y'all think? Um, I don't know. That'd be kind of messed up though, because like, not you, because we know yours is different. But there's a lot of people not watching because of him. I bet you he'd be mm-hmm. having football parties every week. Mm-hmm. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. There's a lot of people not home. watching because of him. Anyway, man, so uh, <laughs> shout out to Colin Kaepernick for doing what he has to do. That's no what happened. The f- Why you want to grind? <laughs> yeah, Yo, salute to the God. Shout out to him. Doing what he said Lord he was going to do. You that bull. All right. <laughs> Real quick. Yo, real quick, 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 quick question though. What, what did your man do mm-hmm. with the money he got from the NFL so far? Uh, did he get a check or like any any words? Or? No, it's not a, it's not like a lump sum. They I like, know. I mean, did he do oh, anything okay. though? Is he, is he get a new uh, car yet? Yale? What? What's up? I don't know if he bought his, uh, his jet yet or, or what. I'm trying to see. I mean, I'm trying to see what's going on with Malcolm Jenkins, man. How much time yeah. are we gonna give him before we start questioning uh, what he did? Uh, it was like th- it was like four weeks ago. I think it's way too early. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's way too the, early. At, at what point uh, can we start calling him names, yo? We definitely uh, got it. We, we definitely days. by next year the first payout should have come by next football season. So, you know, somebody would have had to get some dough by the time football season starts. So I guess that's when we can start questioning him. One of the uh, real quick, members. some quick uh, birthday shout outs. And, of course, birthdays are brought to you by Digital Extreme Technology. Do you or your business need a custom website solution? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions, you need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank for an effective online presence. Top quality, results-driven websites at incredibly affordable prices. You don't have to sit there and make your own website from you know, some templates or anything like that. And financing options are definitely available. So visit digitalextremetech.com or call 267-205-4203. And if you want to get those discounted rates, be sure to let them know that the homies at War Room Sports sent you. Yay! All right, real quick, Julius Peppers uh, turns 38. Uh, Julius Peppers has carved out what could be a Hall of Fame career. Remember borderline. College, borderline. Borderline. Um, he might edge it. But remember in college he was a basketball and a football star. Um uh Mike Lieberthal, former catcher for our Philadelphia Phillies, he turns forty six. Shout out to Mike Lieberthal. Mark Messier, NHL great. He turns fifty five. Yo, we're getting old. Mark Messier is fifty five. And uh rest in peace, shout out to Kurt Flood. Uh, who was born January 18, 1938, and passed on January 20th, 1997. So we like to give a nice war room salute to all of these folks on their birthdays. My birthday, yay! All right, you guys, check out our website, warroomsports.com. If you want to call in and speak with us about any of these NBA topics we're about to talk about, dial the Digital Extreme Tech hotline right now. That number is 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. But if you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to holler. Yes, sir. And it's time to talk about that thing of ours, and it's brought to you by Audible. If you're scheduled to actively read as much as you want, try audiobooks, kick back and let someone else do the reading for you. You can do Early. that by going to Audible Trial. Dot com. Listen, it's time to talk some hoops, yo. It's time to talk about these tough guys. Playing gangster ball. Yo, shout out to um, <laughs> five generations deep in gangster them. A shout out to the light skinned boy Ben. Uh, ben Simmons, Kyle Lowry, uh, Ben Simmons versus Morris. You know, everybody from Philly, everybody who PSP and he won like, you know, act tough with. Um, that that was going on. You got the Rockets entering the Clippers locker room. You got everybody throwing shade at Austin Rivers. 
I mean, what's going on in the NBA right now, man? Aaron Aflalo. Uh, and, you and know what? Ball, like, what's going These on, people, man? They, they tired of hearing everybody talk about former eras, former generations. They tired of hearing that they soft and all that kind of stuff. Start with the Ben situation because the, the Clippers situation was the most egregious and ridiculous and hilarious. So we'll start with Ben. Um, I Like, he – I, I'll give him this. Like, he doesn't start this stuff, so I guess – and the fact that he's – like, the two people that he's beefed with so far are guys who are from Philly. Maybe there's a little bit of jealousy there. You know, you're coming home to your hometown, and this dude is like the prince of your hometown right now. Um, the whole thing with, with Marcus Morris, Ben Simmons just simply ran through a screen. And it's one of those things when you land on your butt when, it, when you're trying to set a screen – you just embarrassed. So he popped up and tried to get tough. Um, with Kyle Lowry, it was kind of unnecessary. Ben wasn't trying to start any of that with him. But what he did, the ball was rolling on the floor. Kyle Lowry had his back to the ball. So Ben Simmons kind of walked up under him to grab the ball and kind of took his knees out. It wasn't nothing crazy. It wasn't during a play or anything like that. But Kyle Lowry took exception to it. Originally, it looked like Ben Simmons was smiling until he realized Kyle Lowry was serious. So throughout the next few plays, they're yapping, then they both get ejected. <laughs> ben Simmons, like, you know, see me in the hallway. Kyle Lowry ran to the hallway. Like, oh, okay, bet. <laughs> now y'all tell me what would have happened if they would have met somewhere in the in the tunnel. <laughs> they had to look for the know. closest person to pull to, to, to hold me hey, back. Hey, can you can you stand in between us while we uh, <laughs> at, at while we act point, up for the cameras? At that point, y'all got like y'all got like fake those hands or something. Um, yeah. I think this is a situation when I watched this and I and I saw all those instances that happen. It, to me, it just comes off like um, people are trying to test the kid and see where he stands. Like he's a light skinned brother. Yeah. And you know, there's a, there's a connotation that comes with that. So people are trying <laughs> to test him. And he's not and, from here. And he's standing up to it, like, look, because I think he knows. Because once you get labeled soft, shout out to uh, Blake Griffin, like that right. sticks with you, and and you know what I mean. So he ain't trying to be Blake Griffin. Right. Yo, I and like that, you know, and for the people, I like the fact that you know, because I see up. the arguments on social media being people like, man, you better leave them on here from Philly. People don't. People don't know. You know, they about their life in Australia. They crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, <laughs> I don't know how he was brought up, but <laughs> but nah, he he she. I mean, on a real level, like it would probably serve him better not to be beefing with dudes that are actually from the city. I mean, we hope it'll never turn into some Tupac Big type stuff. But you know, you don't want to be in the wrong place, outnumbered because. Either somebody put somebody up to something, or you just got goons that just want to quote unquote represent the city. Yo, these young boys up here in the go down. Right, right. They they will they so, will they will they will, they will like they yo they will like. They let the go out work to the game. <laughs> they let the yo, blinky go on you for no reason. Yo, then come to the game and still root for the Sixers, the, although he on the injured yeah, list. They're right. Probably defending somebody they never met, but they from Philly, so they gotta get to defense. So yeah, yeah. that's that's the whole Ben situation. Aaron Aflalo literally let his hands fly the other night. <laughs> he let his Damn, hands go. Did he? <laughs> the just, I mean, it was the slowest. The thing is, he threw a haymaker, and then he ended up in the headlock. So I would still venture to say that he lost. <laughs> <laughs> he lost the fight to the big yeah, it was just, It was just funny, though. It was just funny to yeah, see. Like... Yeah. I mean, he just put his head down like he Marcus think. Williams and just threw a haymaker from the Marcus Williams position. Yeah, <laughs> so that was kind of that was kind of crazy. Like I don't know what's going on in the league right now, man. But I mean, cats, right. cats is like you know letting their hands go. Um, everybody's tough, but we have to. So what do y'all think about this whole Rockets? Yeah, that's the, the one. That, that, yeah, yeah, there we go. Now we got to talk Crip Gang versus Blood Gang and what's that? Oh my boy. You know Yo. what the most ironic part about that is though, because they you know Chris Paul supposedly showed these guys or took them through, like, the secret passageway to be able to get from one locker room to the other one. Yo, this is the president of the Players Association taking some guys to the locker room to beat somebody up. Yeah. And, and, what, and what's even more crazy is he didn't even get in trouble. 
The two lackey dudes, dudes got suspended for two games apiece. Chris Paul and got James Harden got lackey, got lackey, do- lackey dog. <laughs> the lackey dogs got in trouble. But, but the thing is, there are rumors that what happened. There are rumors that Austin Rivers um, spent some intimate uh, skin-on-skin time with his wife. Let him know right. about it. Those are just rumors. I can't, can't you know, say whether it happened or didn't happen. I can't prove that it did, but I also can't prove that it didn't. Um, but yeah, that, w- that would be even worse, though. Austin if Rivers he did spend some court. intimate time with Chris Paul's wife, mm-hmm. why are y'all going over there to beat the dude up? <laughs> that I can't, that Austin, I can't speak for. So, so Austin, you got suspended you know, two games for defending the honor. And what would be even worse, I keep coming up with even worse, what would be even worse is if it was true. So you oh, going over there, Austin Rivers, to beat the Austin dude up, you get suspended, and he might have really did this. Yo, here's what's interesting to me, right? What's interesting to me about this entire situation is I've always felt, I had no proof for this, but I've always felt like Chris Paul and Blake just really didn't like each other even when they were teammates. It's, right, you it's know, obvious now. Not, not to sound like now. my man Miz, but, like, yo, their body language with each other, like, they just never <laughs> seem like, when they would go to press body conferences together, they, they just never seem like they, they – uh, they mess with each other like that. So to right. see him ju- – and it's funny because he jumped in Blake's face, and it's like, yo, Blake really didn't do anything when he jumped in his face. It was like it was like he was looking for a reason to jump in Blake's face. Blake was arguing with his coach, and Chris Paul just took it upon himself to, like, run up and, like, defend his coach like that. And it was kind that of was weird. his opportunity. Like, he, yeah, it was, like, yo, it was like I was waiting for a reason to say something nasty. Like, it was, like he was waiting for a reason. Like, he never liked him. Um, and then... So I found that. I found it interesting. I also found it interesting that um, after this, all the different people in their talk of Austin Rivers, because part of me is laughing, thinks it's funny. Part of me also feels like salute to Doc Rivers for doing what um what they do in their entire lives. My man straight practiced nepotism, but did it in the Yo, NBA. But did it in the <laughs> NBA? And so Austin you Rivers have to give him some kind of props for that, because we always Austin. criticizing our people for not, not looking out for nepotism. their family. He like, Yo, I'm gonna but now all we're doing life. is criticizing <laughs> Doc. He, he, like league money. Nah, he we was taught. Doc, Doc was taught by his wife's family, so we can't give Doc. Our yo, um, yo, Austin, wait to see how you try that. Austin was on the sidelines telling Chris Paul that his wife tastes like Cheerios, so that's why. <laughs> that's why he had a he had a problem with it. But yeah, that didn't come from Doc Doc side of the family. He, he got. But this. what's interesting to me is like oh, all so the his track, mom forced all the people, his hand on it. Yeah. Yeah, all the people. It actually has to be some members. pressure though, because people have offered them decent trades where he was involved, and Doc has turned them down. So I think his Doc's wife, wife might have put Doc's the, wife his, said, his, his, doc, his no. wife might have put the no trade clause not really here, in his but contract. Here, see, this, but is, this is why this is why I always you. thought I always thought it was a bad idea once he came there because of situations like that, which you just said, like you can't. What? It's, it's just bad <sighs> overall because even if things aren't what they appear to be, they appear to be. And right, it's it's just a bad situation. But I don't um, think I don't think I don't think Chris Paul got along with Doc Rivers either. And I think when you saw the body language between in that situation and Doc, Doc wasn't in a hurry to break. I, I heard rumors that he hates Doc's guts. Yeah, oh yeah, I heard yeah. that too. But also, what's yeah. interesting no, I, is when Chris Paul left. Uh, when he left his first team, the Hornets, like and he didn't like anyone there either. Like it's turned out yeah. that nobody likes Chris, Chris, Paul, Paul, Chris like, Paul. Chris Paul is a scumbag that gets commercials. <laughs> he's not that to, quote unquote leader that they try to make him yeah. out to be because I mean some sort of leader you know, he got to follow him into a him. fight for his wife's honor. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're new, you know what I'm saying? Like no, no, I'm no, pretty brother. sure when he comes with the reputation of being a leader, I'm pretty sure early on. Dudes fall for that, but by the time he leaves the Rockets, you know, a reason they're probably going to want to fight him this out. Especially yeah, now, because really they can look at this as them being thrown under the bus. The president of the Players Association gets no punishment, and he brought us over here. <laughs> here's, what's, here's another thing interesting. If like, he's not fighting for them, yo, he might, you know, if he, don't, if he, he don't might not him like him game, tomorrow. If he don't give so, him a game check, this is a problem. Yo, the amount of hate that Doc's son gets is also interesting to me. And, no Doc, and Doc's son is nice. Any not nice, not nice. Excuse me, but he's not a bum. Like, he's, no, um, he's not a bum. He's not as good as he thinks he is. But that's but, what I'm saying. Like you can tell in his body language. Again, here I go with the body language and the way he talks. <laughs> yo, boy talks like he's top five in the league. Right. He's supposed to have that confidence, man. He just well, maybe Doc right. tell him that. Maybe Doc is really right. like the Levar Ball listen, type dude. Listen, 
<laughs> Jimmy, when when Austin Rivers came into the NBA, he said you I better than that. Turdu- I thought he was turducken sauce. He he played <laughs> to be a little bit better than turducken sauce. Like he's a legit. Not, not the turducken, Jim, but the sauce you put on the turducken. At the bottom, <laughs> when it's already cooked for five hours and it's crushed. Yo. Can't, the sauce that came out the gizzard. <laughs> turducken <laughs> sauce, yo. Turducken <laughs> gizzard sauce. It, 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 I, this, there's no way this could end because what happens when Doc loses his job, which will probably happen soon. Like, what is the <laughs> next? Lose coach, <clears throat> what is the next? Yeah, they, they, they <laughs> ship him off to lose his job. Like, yo, go with your pop. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead on with your pop. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead over there with your job. Yo, so, you know, it'd be great because you know if Doc loses his job, he's gonna get a job somewhere else. And he's gonna come right in and pick up Austin Rivers, and that's gonna be uh-huh. hilarious. Didn't, didn't Austin have a forty? They're gonna trade game? the Clippers for him. They're going to give him something. <laughs> What'd you say, B. Austin? Didn't Austin Rivers have a 40-point game? I think he had two of them. Yo, I never expected that from Austin. I mean, you expect yeah. it from Willie Burton? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, well, you know, the sun, the sun shines on the young me, but uh, mess, man. The Clippers are a mess. Uh, I mean, I Austin be talking trash. He hit a shot on you and run down the court stirring it up on you. Yeah, that's he what really I'm saying. Like, nice. you can't tell him that he ain't top five. He thinks it's like LeBron, Steph, and him. But <laughs> even even Matt Barnes said that. He said he he sees why people doesn't like him. He said he's he's really arrogant, and you know most people <laughs> you don't really know why, but he's really arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he got a he got a top five in the league attitude, man. You can't tell about nothing, man. Speaking of that though, Anthony Davis is on a tear right now. My man has back to back games. Where he put up Yo, numbers that haven't been seen since young he's Chuck. The new, he's the new thirty, twenty, twenty, and twenty. I mean, Yo, my first thing of is, all, what he's done this week with the back-to-back forty-five and sixteen games. You know that hasn't been done since the greatest power Sir forward Charles. who's ever lived did it, Sir Charles. Shout out mm. to him. Um, everybody's like, "What? Tim Duncan? Whatever. Charles better than Tim." Um, those are the kind of numbers that Sir Charles used to put up. And, you know, it hasn't been done, a back-to-back game, back-to-back stretch like that since him. Um, Anthony Davis is a monster. You know, his name is coming up in all these trade rumors now. Well, at least teams that are interested LeBron in him. LeBron Celtics are interested in him. Um, well, Le- the- LeBron and the Cavs are interested in every superstar in the league. So they True. they never rest until they get somebody else. But um, if he goes now. to the Celtics... Tell because me. you know how we still talk, you know, people panic when Cleveland goes through what they go through now. And like, man, it's still the East. There's yeah. no team that can beat them four times in a series in the East. Man, if the Celtics found a way to get Anthony Davis, <laughs> then you might as well go ahead and book their trip um, to the NBA Finals. Wouldn't that be it's so interesting, though, that Kyrie leaves and he's the one that ends up back in the Finals? Oh, right. And, and, who would, and people, like, I heard a, a debate the other day of whether, like, if they asked for, like, Horford and Tatum, people were, like, reluctant to give up Tatum. Anthony Davis is 25 years old. I will drive Tatum to the to New Orleans. Like, come on, he's good. He's a very good rookie, but I think some people are starting to, you know, he, he Tatum is becoming a legend already, and, Like, he has no pressure when he plays because he's playing on a very talented team right now. I think he's good, but I think some people are starting to go a little overboard with the the Tatum hype. Yeah, I agree. If you're going to give me Anthony Davis, I will drive him to the airport. I will drive him to the Pelicans Arena. There's only a handful of players in the entire league I would say no to. Yo, (laughs) he's 25, though, so you can't hit me with the – Tatum's so young. No, no, Come on. Listen, Anthony Davis I still got Anthony Davis 10 25. plus. I forgot Anthony Davis was 25 until you just said it. The only right. player I would consider not would be Antetokounmpo. Like, outside <laughs> of that, even even your man, who is the best player in the league still at his Shoot, age. The only reason I might not consider Antetokounmpo would be is just because Anthony Davis would be getting hurt a lot. But, yeah, yeah I pretty much. Too. Damn! 
you know, <laughs> that's been sold on on unibrow for a while, and I understand. Yeah, brow, well, nice. Hold on, though. Yo, we got to talk about, about 40, this, 40, 40, and 40. We got to talk excuse about me. y'all, man. Excuse me, B. Homie's 24. <laughs> Yo, LeBron. Turns 25 in March. I'm, I'm yeah, jumping LeBron the gun about two months. Though. What LeBron got? How you how you how you I'm find out that way? I'm trading LeBron. him straight up for LeBron. Okay, I hear you. Anyway, listen. Paul Pierce says uh, it because he can't be called the other name because um, he ain't the real one. He says it should not be honored on his jersey retirement night. Um, so people fell on uh, two different sides of that, calling Paul Pierce a hater. Um, Jalen Rose called him petty on TV while he was sitting yo, right next I, to him. I, I personally don't like Paul Pierce, and I do think he's petty and he's a hater, but I actually agree with him, even even with me disliking Paul Pierce the way I do. Man, I agree with him. The truth. You are living um, a lot. Dog, ever since I saw that boy fake that injury and get in the wheelchair, I ain't got no respect for that boy. That shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was why, the most that's WWE why, moment that's why, in that's why, the history that's of the league. Like, that was yo, like gangster. Like man. Yo, that's that's that why I'm gangster. glad Joe Johnson killed him anyway. So he he died that <laughs> <man>. really, like, <laughs> yo, The yo, night he I, I fully, chairs with Joe Johnson. I fully guys. agree with him. Be uh, Jimmy. For me, I not only think that they shouldn't honor him on Paul Pierce's jersey retirement night and I birthday. Think he should be honored. Too. I don't think he should get honored at all. Oh, I Dude don't either. Played he played in Boston for two and a half think, seasons. They did I nothing. Really I mean, they made the Eastern Conference Finals last year. This is guilt. Trophy that is highest. Yo, culturally guilt. speaking, I think it's guilt, but I think it's deeper than that. Culturally speaking, we're in a we're in a um a, a weird place where we're going to start honoring everybody and everybody, oh, yeah, everybody gets statues. statues. These days. Everybody, everybody gets statues. Everybody, gets statues. everybody gets three no, different jerseys is, retired. This is man, you came to play in a playoff game for us the day after your sister died. And we and, and then we you know we offed you at the end of the season. The thing was this was gonna happen anyway because they weren't gonna pay that man the max when it came time. No. So you know, like I told y'all before, Kyrie was there out. They were gonna get they weren't gonna pay him the max anyway. So if you could say, man, we had a chance to get Kyrie Irving, we had to make that move. But you salute know, to the flatter. This is all good. Like we get a video montage tribute for you played there two and a half years and y'all did nothing. I think they gave Kelly Olnick a video monster. <laughs> no, I'm yo. not joking. I'm not joking. Yo, I real talk? Was... Brian Scalabrini deserves to be tributed by the Celtics more than IT. White Mamba, baby. Real talk. Because White Mamba, he's one of, he treats the Boston Celtics like the New England Patriots players treat them after they leave that team. Yo. White Mamba is like, he, he a Celtic stand. Yo, Dennis Johnson, did he get it? Did he get it? No, no. No. How about how about the chief? He got the chief. He got the chief. <laughs> My son heard me say white mamba. He just asked me if there's a green mamba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. no, son, there's no green mamba. <laughs> no, his name is Buffy. The green mamba. The white mamba is even made up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. And and and, uh, and shout out to Shannon Sharp, but Paul Pierce is a top five Celtic of all time. Argue with me later because we ain't got time. People were no. telling me Chief. Chief ain't. No, I'm not even Chief thinking about hired. Chief. No, no, it's not you. That, I'm just talking other people. It's, it's just that, like, for me, when you say the, the two team, when you say even the Sixers, when you say top five Sixers, Celtic, Laker, it's That's hard to beat. I, it's definitely yeah, hard to beat. So I, I don't know if I want to put him there. I mean, we already know Bird. I'm is going. Bird. I'm like, going that, Russell, Bird. I probably really mean Bird Russell, but Russell Bird, um, McHale. I think I think I think Paul Pierce and McHale are interchangeable. I don't. I That's don't. what I think. Yo, Kevin I think McHale they're interchangeable. I think Kevin McHale yeah. might be the most underrated Celtic, just for the simple fact that if he didn't play with Larry Legend, he might Kevin be. McHale, That's the thing. He was yo, never given that leadership role, so you move, look at him a little different. And what he did when my man chief, put up sixty points, he I had a chief, chief. But you got guys like Havlicek. You got, you know. No, you got to have. Well, I go Koozie. Koozie yeah. would probably be three. I'll go. I go Koozie is three. Have and I, I would go either McHale and Pierce at four or five. Throw them wherever, and then probably like Havlicek at like six. Yeah, I don't think Pierce makes my top five though. I'm gonna keep it a yeah, bean. I with you. Yeah, I got him at six. I, I got, got Nate Tiny. I got Nate Tiny Archibald. Oh, as a Celtic though. Yeah. Like maybe maybe all you know, 
maybe he goes ahead of him on the list of players. But as a Celtic. After watching that documentary, I got Cedric Maxwell, though. (laughs) <laughs> said wasn't Cedric leader Max- though. They looked to him. It was like Bird and said <laughs> Cedric Maxwell. And yo, right. I'm gonna take my man. I'm gonna take my man Len Bias, even though he never really played the yo, game. And Reggie Lewis. Yo, yo, Reggie Lewis was nice though. Yeah, he was. Dog. Right, anyway, dude, you can't tell me Len Bias wasn't better than him. Anyway, we gotta get out of here. Thanks to you brothers and sisters for joining us for another briefing in the war room. Shout to everybody. In the chat room, Facebook, Twitter, the group app, everybody, salute to all of you. Thanks for all the support. Those that called and got through, you know, salute to you. Those that we couldn't get to, we apologize. As you can see, we're running out of time. Um, listen, man.